Welcome to the house that Bud built. Where Barry made his mark. Where Bob continues to roll. Welcome to the home where Superman lives. and 42 All-American. Forty-seven game winning streak. Forty conference titles. Count them. Seven national championships. There's only one. Only one. 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 Oklahoma. This is Oklahoma football. Clones can be the second team this season to upset the Sooners on the road. For more on that possibility, let's join Bill Land and Dave Lapper. Thanks, Michael. DeMarco, well, it'll certainly be a huge challenge for Iowa State here. You saw a little bit of OU in their offense, their great rushing attack. But, Dave, don't forget the defense because this is a team that can stop the run and create turnovers. Exactly. They're, they only give up 65 yards a game on the ground, fourth best in the country. And then they make people throw the football and turn people loose. And I'll tell you what, they get great play out of Curtis Lofton at the linebacker position, middle linebacker. This kid is phenomenal. He's averaging just under 12 tackles a game, which puts him four fourth best in the nation. He scored two of their four defensive touchdowns. He's a playmaker, no question about it. Then at the defensive line, another playmaker is Austin English. And you're looking at last week's numbers for these guys, but for the season, Austin English, 11 and a half tackles for loss, 11th in the nation, seven and a half sacks, which puts him at number nine in the country. He is a former 100 yard meter champion and a running back. So he's got that quick twitch. He can really get off the ball. And a bad combo for Iowa State because the Cyclones are last in total offense in the Big 12. It'll take a lot to yeah. have them pull off a monumental upset here. We'll send it back to you, Michael. DeMarco? All right, guys, thanks a lot. We'll hear more from you at the bottom of the hour. DeMarco, as we mentioned, the fourth road trip in the last five games for the Sooners. They got a big game next week against A&M. Is this another trap game for Oklahoma? No, I, I don't think the trap game scenario works for Oklahoma anymore after what happened with Colorado. Colorado kind of woke them up. They got in a fight against Colorado. Bob Stoops told me they hadn't been in a fight until they played Colorado, and it kind of woke them up, kind of let everybody know, hey, what it's going to take to win week in and week out in the Big 12. So it just that's just bad news for Iowa State yeah. that Oklahoma is awake. Goliath now knows what's in front of them. Well, what's in front of them, too, is o uh, Oklahoma quarterback Sam Bradford. He's proven to be one of the best freshmen in the nation, leading all quarterbacks in pass efficiency, and he's fourth in both completion percentage and touchdown passes. DeMarco. Those are not typical freshman numbers. No, not typical freshman numbers, but he's no typical freshman quarterback. I love his poise and demeanor. Almost Tiger Woods like. He expects Ooh, to make plays. Tiger Woods, check out these numbers. His quarterback rating is ridiculous at 181. 20 touchdown passes, literally 1,700 yards. If he's that good, if he's really that good, why is he not getting some of the hype that uh, someone like Tim Tebow was getting last year as well, a freshman? Well, you said 181 is quarterback rating. That's because he's not getting touched. He has a great offensive line. But let me tell you why he's not getting Heisman love. It's because he's in a run-first offense. It's not like Tim Tebow. He's not shocking the world, running and passing. He's just managing the football game. He's handing off when called. He's making the right checks and throwing on third and short like Bob Stoops likes. Maybe next season and the season after, we'll start talking Bradford for Heisman. He could be there in the preseason rankings for the Heisman Trophy. Well, more to come on today's class between number five, Oklahoma, and Iowa State. But let's sneak in some text questions real quick. Thank you for getting in, man. From Morgan, who is a better receiver, Joaquin Iglesias or Malcolm Kelly? Malcolm Kelly, easier name to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim wants to know how long before Coach Chizik turns around that Cyclone program. Let's see. Uh, uh, get back to me on that. I'm still trying to figure out the time frame. Mark wants to know, what exactly is a Sooner? Uh, it's a very smart person who got there before everyone else and got some land, trust me. And Jason wants to know, will the wishbone ever be Vogue again? Vogue, it's already in. It's the, it's the spread attack. It's just the quarterbacks and shotgun now. I think it's like the new wave That's in the college new football. Wave, yeah. yeah. Well, don't forget, more of those text questions come. Oh, no!
number one anyway. Oh, you's back, aren't you? Oh, you's about winning championship. He's back again! Yeah. No question, Oklahoma definitely one of the premier programs in all of college football with those seven national titles, second only to Notre Dame's eight. Bud Wilkinson claiming three championships for the Sooners in the 50s. Barry Switzer won three as well, 74, 75, and 85. And then Bob Stoops winning the title back in 2000, just his second year in Norman. And speaking of national titles. Make sure this gets back to my trophy case. Yeah, we'll, we'll have it back at your house soon. <laughs> well, in order for the Sooners to win the Coaches National Championship trophy presented by DirecTV, DeMarco, is it partly going to come down to style points for Stoops and company? Yeah, for Oklahoma, it is about style points, but don't tell that to Iowa State. They still think they have a chance to win. But it is about style points. You're competing with LSU and all the one-loss teams. You have to show and prove. You have to show people you can run the ball efficiently. You can play good defense. You can be physical on the offensive line. It's about impressing people enough to to put you in that top three. Because you still have those other teams that are unbeaten right yes. now. Well, Iowa State may not be the strongest team OU plays this season, but there might be something else to worry about today. Every Sooner fan remembers last year's matchup when Adrian Peterson went down That's with that broken collarbone. Oh. Now, granted, this is something that can happen to any player at any time, but DeMarco, can you ever go into a game hoping not to get injured? Never. You, you got to leave that in the locker room. It's like walking in the rain and expecting not to get wet. It's just one of those things that happens. You have to go out and play. But I remember this game with Adrian Peterson. His dad was in the stands for the first time watching him. Never did that before. He was running like his hair was on fire. He scored. He hurt his shoulder. Everyone, everyone went out. We wondered what's going to happen to OU. OU actually got better running the football. They split those carries up between three guys, and they've been unstoppable since. Yeah, that's carried into this season, that's for sure. Well, folks, today is... From Jack Trice Stadium in Ames, Iowa, it's Big 12 football presented by Kyocera. Today, the BCS number five team, Oklahoma, faces the Cyclones of Iowa State. And to put it simply, there's a log jam at the top of the Big 12 South standings. Four teams with identical two and one conference records, including the Oklahoma Sooners. They've been led by their outstanding redshirt freshman quarterback Sam Bradford throwing for nearly 1,700 yards, 20 TDs, and just four interceptions. It's the veteran on the other side calling the shots, Brett Meyer, a chance to move into second place all time in Big 12 history on those passing charts. And we welcome you folks, Bill Land, Dave Lapham. Glad to have you aboard here in Ames, Iowa. Talk about the Sooners. You do start with their quarterback, Sam Bradford. He's been sensational. He really has. He's completing over 70% of his passes, and he's thrown the ball all over the football field. Weapons galore. He's going to hit his wide receivers regularly. Iglesias is big time. So he attacks that position group. Then down the middle of the field, he can go to the tight ends and stretch the field that way. Gresham is big time. And then out of the backfield, he's got multiple backs he can throw to. So just check it down if there's nothing down the football field. And this is the best in space. DeMarco Murray can turn an eight-yard reception into an 80-yard <laughs> touchdown. And Bradford's like a point guard distributing all the ball to his talent. Oh, you coaches say they can play even better offensively. That's kind of scary. Now, defensively, this team has been very solid all year long, particularly coming to stopping the run. Yeah, they are unbelievable stopping the run, allowing only 65 yards a game, fourth best in the nation. And then they turn these guys loose when offenses get one-dimensional. And Curtis Lofton has scored two of the defense's four touchdowns. He is just very instinctive. Austin English is a force on the edge. He's got that quick twitch. I mean, he is a former 100-meter champion running back in high school. He just penetrates, creates havoc in the backfield. Huge challenge for Iowa State to slow down powerful Oklahoma today. The Sooners have a big playmaker in Malcolm Kelly. Iowa State counters with Todd Blythe. We're back to the studio. DeMarco Farr and Michael Eves in just a moment. Today's game presented in FSN HD and brought to you by Hitachi. Iowa State runs on at one and six, trying to recover from a loss to Texas, facing Oklahoma fresh off a win over the Missouri Tigers. Let's send it down to Jim Knox with the head coach of the Cyclones, Gene Chisholm. Coach, you're facing not only one of the top ranked teams in the nation today, but their offense puts plenty of points on the board. How do you slow down the Sooner offense? Well, the bottom line is today we got to play physical football on defense. We can't give up any big plays or quarterbacks on target. We got to be physical and stop the run today, right now. And that's the bottom line on defense. You can't play these guys without being physical all day long. Best of luck, Coach. Thank you. 
All right, thanks to Gene Chizik for his help and cooperation. Fred Culbertson boots it off. Iglesias and Murray are deep. And Iglesias at the 10, the 20, 25. Time to turn the corner and plop down near the 31-yard line. Chris Brown makes the tackle for Iowa State. Kiyosara presents our starting lineups today as Oklahoma, led by quarterback Sam Bradford, who has been phenomenal, throwing for 1,689 yards, 20 TDs, and four interceptions to a bevy of receivers. 14 different players have scored for Oklahoma. Alan Patrick, just a part of that running back group along with Murray and Brown that has been so dynamic. First to 10 at the 32 for the Sooners. They come out throwing, and it is complete to Iglesias, but for a loss on the play as Chris Singleton makes the stop from his right corner position and a loss of three. Again, Kiyosara presenting our lineups in the defensive side. You just saw Singleton with the tackle. He might be the best in their secondary. Their leading tackler is linebacker Alvin Bowen. Oklahoma, second and 13 now for the Sooners. <laughs> Kelly and Johnson wide to the near side. Bradford again to throw, and it comes to Kelly. Kelly got by, oh, still stretching and leaning. And Kelly Singleton again makes the tackle. Well, Dave, let's talk a bit about the keys here. Well, Oklahoma wants to run the ball more efficiently. They want the consistent four, five, six yard carry. They've had big plays, but they want to be consistent with it. They want to establish the physical presence and post their will on Iowa State, both sides of the line of scrimmage. They want to play 60 minutes, particularly on the road, finishing the fourth quarter. They want to erase the bad memory that occurred for them in Colorado when they had a 24-7 lead with eight minutes to play in the third quarter, did not finish that football game. Kelly goes wide left here on a third and three. Bradford right across the middle and incomplete trying to hit Murray and Banks was there to break it up the Sam linebacker John Banks a senior from East Moline Illinois the Quad City area and that's a big defensive stand one two three and out basically for Iowa State on the defensive side of the football and the key to that was getting Oklahoma off schedule when they tried that little wide receiver screen that was thrown for a three yard loss Second and long, third down, couldn't convert. Cohen nearly got it blocked. Blythe, the receiver, and stays away. So Iowa State winning the coin toss, deferring to the second half. They stop Oklahoma, and they'll get it first and 10 on the 23 after a 39-yard punt. Kiyosara again with our lineups here now. Let's take a look at the offense of Iowa State, led by Brett Meyer, the 6'3 senior who was thrown for 807, 8,000, I should say, 738 yards and a chance to move up into second place on the Big 12 charts. Scales gets the call at running back again. He had 77 yards rushing in their loss to Texas last week, and Blythe is their star wideout. Yeah, he's got 26 touchdown catches. He and Meyer have hooked up for it. They'll end around, and Hamilton is brought down at the 23-yard line. And Austin English makes the tackle. That OU defensive group is stout, allowing just 18 points a game, second in the Big 12. And you saw English as a star, Granger, McCoy, Dotson, Baker, Lofton, Pleasant gets the start in place of Reynolds today. And DJ Wolf leads him with picks with three on the year. Yeah, Reynolds suffering an arm injury, and he's out of this afternoon's contest. He had seven and a half tackles for locks in the first seven games for Oklahoma. He'll be missed. Second and ten for the Iowa State Cyclones on their opening possession. Meyer. Scales. Nothing doing against that Oklahoma front. Gerald McCoy makes the tackle. What about keys for the Cyclones, Dave? Well, they can't turn it over, you know, Bill. I mean, they're minus 10 on the season, 20 giveaways. That can't happen. You can't give Oklahoma extra possessions. Stay on schedule. They can't uh, suffer a tackle for loss or a quarterback sack and be second and third and long, speeding right into Oklahoma's strength. 
They can't allow an unconventional score. Oklahoma's defense has scored four times this year. And then Bob Stoops on the Bob Stoops special teams have 25 touchdowns for Oklahoma. You can't give that kind of thing up to the Sooners and stay in the football game. Yeah, it's that basketball analogy. Points off turnovers against Oklahoma because they score. Meyer tucks it under. Got some room. The first down as he rolls across the 35 to the 36-yard line, a pickup of 12 before D.J. Wolf upends it. That was a very, very good decision and a quick one by Brett Meyer, saying, okay, I went through my progression, nowhere to go. I found a little seam, a little running lane. I'm going to tuck it and run. And that's what he can do to you. He can create with his legs and his feet. He can extend a play. And that, that time he created a play with his feet that generated a first down moving the chains on third and long. Picture perfect day, 60 degrees, a kickoff, wind five to 10 miles an hour, clear skies expected to rise to 70 today. Cyclones playing like the weather so far, they've been outstanding. And nothing doing though on that run again as scales has stopped here and it'll make it a second down and long as Holmes makes the tackle. Talk about Brett Meyer. Durability is what comes to mind, Dave. Yeah, durability. This is his 44th consecutive start. And due to those number of snaps that he's taken, he's going to put up all kinds of numbers. And he's going to rewrite the record books passing at Iowa State. And he's making a statement in the conference record books as well. And there's some luck involved. I mean, he hasn't missed a practice, hasn't missed a game. But he's accountable, reliable, and his teammates respect him. Second and 10 from the 36. Meyer to Hamilton, broke a tackle, dives out to the 45, a yard short of the first down. Nick Harris makes the tackle after a nine-yard pickup. Marquise Hamilton, who's an Oklahoman, a sophomore out right. of Edmond North in the Oklahoma City area, and he has 23 catches for 245 yards coming in. And the guy he missed, it made miss, isn't chopped liver. It's the number one tackler on the team right there. Curtis Lofton coming off the block, Brandon. But Curtis Lofton is a very sure tackler. Almost 12 tackles a game, fourth in the country. And he missed on that one. 18 last week in the Sooner win against Mizzou. Third and one, Meyer. The option, Scales. Got the first down. Brought down on the Cyclone sideline. Just shy of midfield, Nick Cyclone. Harris, the junior free safety from Alexandria, Louisiana, the tackle. I like how the offense is the, the execution and mixing it up. Robert McFarland doing a great job of changing personnel with substituting different personnel every snap, different formations, running the option to say to Oklahoma, look, you better be careful about blitzing. And, and that on that particular sequence, they stayed on schedule and they had a third and one. When you're third and one, your percentages of being successful increase dramatically as opposed to third and seven or more. Now the coaches here, the new staff, there was Coach McFarland, the offensive coordinator, once the head coach of Stephen F. Austin. And they've been trying to get Brett Meyer to become more of a manager. Well, he's managed his first drive very well. In trouble here. Good throw. And that's get something else they yeah. want him to do because he's only been sacked 10 times in seven games this year after 105 sacks in his first three years here. And let's go to Gene Chizik talking a little bit of how the Texas game prepared them for this game today. Be honest with you, you know, I think they have a better idea of what they're going to face this Saturday than they did last Saturday, simply because I think these two separate themselves in a lot of ways from the rest of the pack when it comes to, you know, the type of football game that they put on the field. So I think it helped us uh, last week just to be able to be in a game like we did with Texas. Obviously, we didn't play like we wanted to play, but I think that'll help us with the speed of the game and the size and, and the power of those two football teams when we go out and take the field against Oklahoma. Scales Eight picks up a yard on a second and ten, makes it a third and nine. And Dave, last week we were here for that Texas slaughter. Iowa State moved it well early, but right. couldn't convert. Yeah, they got the red zone bill, and there, there was a holding penalty that got them out of the red zone. They hooked a field goal, and that was discouraging to go the length of the field like that and come up with no points. But I think they realized that if they execute, they could compete. And, and the speed of the game, after you play Texas, it is a lot easier to adjust to Oklahoma speed. Third and nine for Meyer. Steps up in the pocket and goes down in the pocket as English is there to hog time. Austin English. Well, we three. mentioned 
Austin Taylor. Now eight and a half sacks, tops in the Big 12, and a loss of seven on a huge third down play. And this is where Oklahoma starts to lick their chops when they get you third and long. And Iowa State was facing a third and nine. And out of the shotgun, receivers are plastered down the field, nowhere to go. Austin English just finishes. And, and once he gets Brett Meyer in his grasp, it's uh, coffin nails. It, it, the play is over. So Brantner comes on to punt. Mike Brantner, sophomore from Bettendorf, Assumption High School here in Iowa. 39 and a half on the average. Franks, the receiver, Dominique Franks, nowhere. Great kick coverage by Iowa State on a 39-yard punt. Bowen makes the tackle. We're back after a brief timeout on FSA. There is college football Saturday, Iowa State, Oklahoma, no score, 7.39 to go first quarter. Both teams, one possession so far. Oklahoma brings a lot to the table in the BCS poll. They are now number five. South Florida, of course, was number two until getting bumped off by Rutgers. That'll drop them. There's a lot of zeros up there still, a lot of one-loss teams at Dave. More importantly, a lot of football left. A lot of football to be played, and I think South Florida may drop out of the top ten. Oklahoma could move up. They see us in motion here for Bradford and Brew, first and 10 for Oklahoma. Alan Patrick ran into a wall and just turns the corner. Oh, nice. 25, and Patrick shows you his power as he gets to the 30 and more. Rashawn Parker makes the tackle. You were telling me before the game, that's that move there is what you like about this guy. Yeah, he, he is strong, and, and I'll tell you what I like too is Sam Bradford threw the block for him. And once he changed direction, Sam Bradford came back as the quarterback and threw a courageous block. Over pursuit. Everybody's in one little bunch. Look at the finish in the blocks right there. Everybody getting after it. But watch as he comes back. Sam Bradford right there. Boop, field back. Hey, that quarterback getting after it. And it's first and 10 at the 30 after that play. Patrick again. Now Patrick's best outing was 145 yards and two scores against Tulsa. Last week against Missouri, 11 carries for 44 yards and missed the North Texas game the season opener with an ankle injury and has been back and forth, but he's 100%. Look at the balance between the two running backs. Three, three carry differential and only a nine-yard uh, uh, nine differential in, in, uh, in the amount of yards. The average is just about the same. That's balance. I mean, they're both they're averaging over 200 yards, throwing in, passing, and balancing the running. Game. Balls Bumble out. on the deck, wide open. Iowa State picks it up. And the Cyclones will have it at the 35-yard line with Sean Parker. Turned around and said, oh, my goodness, what is that? It's a football. You. Pick it up. Yeah, Banks knocked it out of there, and Parker came up with it. And I'll tell you what, Oklahoma had no idea the ball was in the ground. Bill Phil, uh, Big Phil Lobo was in the area, but he didn't even know the ball was on the ground. So we talked about turnovers and how important they were going to be in this game. And Iowa State couldn't force any, but they knocked one out. And, and the ball is on the ground forever. I mean, Oklahoma has no idea that the ball has been punched out of there. Look at that. And everybody's just kind of standing around. And then it's like, well, I'll take it. If nobody <laughs> wants it, I'll pick it up and do something with it. So turnovers, which I think are the biggest stat in all levels of football. No and Iowa State gets the first break. What do they do? First to 10 on the 35. Meyer trying to go deep. Blythe is held up, and the flag comes flying. Well, I think that's a good uh, penalty to take because Blythe had him beaten on a double move. And when you're beaten on the double move, you say, you know what, I'm just going to grab it. That's what Marcus Walker did. He just absolutely grabbed him because if he That's doesn't, Blythe's got a touchdown. Defense, number 24, 15-yard penalty, first down. And Bob Stoops is chewing him out about it and saying, you know what, don't look in the backfield. Don't look at the quarterback. Stay with the receiver. And, and there's the grab right there. Walker already grabbing Blythe. And, uh, and, and Blythe realizes, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be demonstrative. I mean, I got grabbed. My ability to run down the football field was totally taken away. I got to make sure I sell that penalty. That was an obvious one. Now, Blythe with 29 career touchdown receptions. He is fifth in Big 12 history. Trying to join that elite group of 30. Might have had one there. Well, only 13 points off their first 10 takeaways of the season. Let's see if they can put this one in the end zone on their 11th takeaway. First and 10. Right up the middle. And the running game finally pops a little bit for the Cyclones now. As Lofton makes the tackle, Todd Blythe is a guy who has been through some tough times here in his senior year, only three touchdowns. He's a well-marked man playing for a new coach and a new offense. 
But this guy's a big time playmaker. Yeah, he is. And this is where he is such a big weapon at 6'6. A little bit of a fade from his roommate, Brett Myers. And he's already number one in touchdowns with 29, number one in yards. And he's five catches away from overtaking uh, Lance, Dan uh, Lance Danielson. Second down, scales. Made one miss, but then got tripped up. Beg your pardon, as Marcus Walker <laughs> dives in and got him. And if he didn't, it might have been six. Yeah, if he didn't, he, it would have had to been the inside out of that Oklahoma defense and all the team speed they had. It would have been interesting. But here he comes off the corner and he takes the angle. And Blythe could have been called for pushing them in the back. No penalty on the edge. If you if you don't have an opportunity to get your body in front, don't put your hands on the on the defensive back's back and take a chance. No penalty was called. Walker still made the play. Excellent effort by him. Third and five at the 15-yard line. Life in motion. They fake to him. Meyer scrambling, still looking. Got a man, and yes. he is complete. Yes. That'll be a first and goal at the three-yard line. A pickup of 13 yards as. Coming up with the reception, R.J. Sumrall. Sumrall gets his 34th reception of the season. And that was just a patience demonstrated by everybody. Brett Meyer extended the play with his feet, bought time, bought time, went to the sideline. Look at it. Catch the ball and dot the eye with the right foot. Total possession, come down in bounds. Huge first and goal. Iowa State has to convert. Remember, the first 10 takeaways, only 13 points. This 11th takeaway, if they can pound it in for a touchdown and take a lead on Oklahoma, that would be big. They look for Blythe for the fade. Can't hang on. They got what they wanted, the one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. Holmes was the cover man. Yes, he was. And, and you know, Blythe, not only 6'6", he's got great leaping ability. And that time, Brett Meyer didn't get the ball up high enough. You know, you have to get it up where Blythe can make a play on it, and the ball's down a little bit too low, and it ends up bouncing off Holmes' helmet. You got to get it airborne more than that because Blythe's already elevated well above Holmes, but the ball was down at Holmes' level of his, of his helmet. So if, if, if Meyer can get the ball up, that's a touchdown for Blythe. Second and goal from the two. Touchdown, Iowa State! Willundu led the way, and the Cyclones are on the board first against number five Oklahoma as Jason Scales gets his third touchdown of the year. Little swinging gate here in the extra point. Oklahoma has to be sound with. And Iowa State executing their game plan to perfection. Win the turnover battle, get the short field, stay on schedule, and score. That was a Nicely done by the defensive football team. The offense responds. Bet Culberson for the point after. 12 of 12 this year. And Culbertson, the senior from Des Moines, Iowa, gets the PAT. Jason Scales with a touchdown, and it's Iowa State 7, Oklahoma 0. A stunner early. Iowa State 7 0 on Scales' touchdown. And our Kawasaki scoring drive all set up five plays, 35 yards by that Oklahoma fumble in the ISU recovery. And it's the Cyclones with a 7-0 lead. Bill Land, Dave Lappin, Jim Knox with you here. Alan Patrick had trouble keeping the handle, and Gene Chizik sees his clones jump out 7-zip. In Oklahoma, that's their 12th fumble of the season. They've lost nine of them. 12 fumbles on the ground and have not come up with nine of them. The short kick taken at the 28 as Copeland's kickoff had brought down at the 33 yard line is Joe John Finley, the receiver. Now, here's how it all started Patrick, ball security is key. Banks strips it out of there. Rashawn Parker comes up with it. Oklahoma had no idea Patrick fumbled the football. And here's the uh, pass interference call. You can't grab Blythe. And uh, grabbing Blythe was Marcus Walker. And then later finish it. You know what? Take that touchdown. Uh, take that turnover and score a touchdown with it. Their first 10 takeaways, they only had 13 points. In the 11th takeaway of the season, they got seven. They got more than half of the points that they accumulated on their first 10 takeaways. So they were opportunistic. Finish with that takeaway with a touchdown. And then, Dave, they short kick, not wanting to give OU a big return. OU gets a holding call against them. So it's pushed back now to the 25 on this series, first and 10. Bradford rolling out, finds Kelly, got him on the sideline, 
and steps out of bounds. Shy of the first down, four. Singleton Kelly. covering, picks up seven on the play. Malcolm Kelly, big playmaker, averages 19 yards per reception. He's got eight TDs. Yeah, on only 27 catches coming in. A, a touchdown every three and a half receptions. And he's got two receptions today, and he hasn't scored a touchdown. So pretty soon, you start getting that third and fourth reception. By percentages, Malcolm Kelly scores for him. Iowa State with the lead for the first time ever against a Stoops coached oh, OU team. Hard to believe. This one is complete to Johnson, and he has got the first down. John Banks makes the tackle, picks up 10 yards. Manuel Johnson, a junior from Gilmer, Texas, and coming up with his 11th reception of the season. And, and last week, Iowa State had some trouble with uh, Texas passing game, so Oklahoma decided to spread the field and throw the football toward the sidelines. And, and they did it to uh, Johnson. They did it on first down to Kelly. They, uh, and then and they get the ball to Johnson. So Bradford distributing the ball to all partners of the field to probably different position groups as this game goes along. He'll involve a lot of people. Iglesias in motion. Kelly at the top of your screen on the left. Play action. Bradford a throw. Uh -oh. Looking deep and wide open. Under thrown and incomplete. Kelly was six waiting to happen. Yep. Brown got there as the ball was underthrown to knock it away. I think it was late and underthrown both because Kelly was there. He was available. Talked about every three and a half catches. He scores for you. He's got two catches on the day. A skinny post and he is there. But because the ball is late, you know, the opportunity to run back and recover and make a play on the football. And that's exactly what Sam Big did. Second and ten, the ball at the 42 now for Oklahoma. Down 7 nothing. 4-10 to go. First quarter here in Ames Eye. Bradford out to Johnson. Johnson moves it to the 49-yard line before John Banks makes the tackle. He picks up seven. Banks coming in with 38 tackles. On that tackle for Iowa State. Let's send it down to Jim Knox on the sidelines. All right, Bill, you may recall last week we were here. Texas jumped on top of Iowa State quick. Well, this Iowa State line right now fired up. They're getting a little confidence because of that drive. They moved the ball against Oklahoma. And don't forget about the fans right there. They were out of the game five minutes into the last week's game. This week, they're very much in it. Yep, Knoxie, uh, first play last week for Texas, a 56-yard touchdown plant pass. First play this week for Oklahoma, three-yard loss on a wide receiver screen. Big difference. That'll get people involved. Third and three for Oklahoma, the 49. Bradford going to Iglesias, just off his fingertips. Oh, my, how close was that to being six as Alvin Bell was beaten on the play? Just out of sync is Bradford. He had two touchdowns that they left on the football field on this possession. Little double move, and the double move is successful, but just a little bit too much on the football. Can't make the play. And then, of course, he underthrew Kelly, overthrew Iglesias. So Sam Bradford completing almost 71% of his passes on the season, a little bit off early today. Yeah, even though he's 4-7, he had a couple big misses. Low snap, Cohen handles it high punt but short and it takes a cyclone bounce before OU downs it near the 27 yard line 24 yard punt is all we'll take a brief break cyclones with the early lead welcome back to Ames Iowa State with a 7-0 lead early on Oklahoma this week on sports science what are the fastest reaction times in sports from hitting a fastball to stopping a slap shot, we put elite athletes under the microscope to find out. Sports Science examines reaction time tomorrow at 9 p.m. only on FSN. Check your local listings for the start time in your area. Iowa State started on time here today. Here's Meyer, first to 10, and he completes it out of the back of the 31-yard line. And Catlett makes the reception. Derek Catlin, a sophomore from Fort Collins, Colorado, is tackled by Demario Pleasant, who gets the start today in place of Ryan Reynolds for OU at the linebacker spot. Pick up about, we'll give him three on that one. So on, on six first down plays, they picked up eight yards. On four of their first spot, they had zero gain. On the first first down after the takeaway, they had a five-yard pickup. Second and eight for ISU at the 30. Change of the play is Meyer. Seven on the play clock. Hand off and scales breaking it. 45, 
Driven out of bounds on the Oklahoma sideline. Jason Scales, who scored the touchdown earlier, picks up 17 on this run. And he ran right through a couple of Oklahoma defenders. And, and I'll tell you, you got you to make the tackle when the tackle's available to you. And, and Brent Venables is, is not, not happy about this one. Coming off the block, you've got to finish that tackle. You can't miss that tackle like Lewis Baker did. He's there. He's in the hole. You have to finish the play. Get your head across the bow. Iowa State is playing with more intensity and emotion early in this game than Oklahoma. First to 10 at the 48. Meyer, three of five for 25 yards. They've run it well. Clinch. It's going to cost Iowa State five. Before the snap, ball start. Offense number one. Five yards, first down. Well, if it's hard for people to take Iowa State serious, Look at the series. Oklahoma 66, 5, and 2. And the last time ISU won was 1990. The last time they won here at home was 1960, Dave. Man. We're talking before the game. Yeah. Ike was the president. Dwight Eisenhower. We and like Bob Ike. Stoops was nine weeks old the last time that I was up, I was Iowa State, State won on its home the field against Oklahoma. Out. 30 seconds timeout. Milk probably cost five cents a gallon. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> and gas right. was probably 10 cents a gallon. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. What matters Timeout most Iowa County State County here with the State Cyclones daycare. leading 7 0. Last year, it was kind of a little United sweet and sour for Oklahoma in their win over Iowa State Peter down in Norman as the Sooners got the victory they wanted. And Adrian Peterson led the way once again. Peterson, this was back on October 14th, 26 rushes, 183 yards, two touchdowns. He was brilliant all day long. He was brilliant, and, and as a matter of fact, leading the NFL in rushing right now. But this was a game, unfortunately, there it was his last carry for Iowa State. That's a touchdown run that Peterson had. His dad, first game he was able to see in person in quite a few years. This was the touchdown run where Adrian Peterson broke his collarbone as he lunges into the end zone to finish this run, lands on his left shoulder and breaks the collarbone. That was his last carry of the regular season. He didn't play again until the Fiesta Bowl. 34-9 was the final for Oklahoma. Don't forget, Peterson and the Vikings play the Dallas Cowboys on Fox and NFL action tomorrow. First and 15 from the 43 following the last play. And now the stop of scales, nothing doing. He loses a couple. Reggie Smith, the junior out of Edmond, Oklahoma, makes the tackle. Remember, Oklahoma giving up 65 yards a game on the ground, fourth in the nation. And they make teams one-dimensional and make them throw the football because they have to, not because they really want to. And Bob Stoops has uh, been upset on the sideline, and rightfully so. He's trying to light a fire under his football team emotionally and have them pick up their intensity. Yeah, they've had 12 carries, 33, rushing, 33 yards rushing so far today. The look-in pattern is complete. And diving out to midfield is number 82, Marquise Hamilton. Lofton, the tackler, a five-yard pickup for Iowa State. Still a long way to go on this third down. Third, and let's call it 13. And, and what you have going here with Iowa State is on a snap-by-snap -snap basis, their chests are swelling. They're starting to feel good about themselves. And third down today, three out of four. And uh, that's much better than their season percentage uh, conversion, 75% right now. This is a team that is last in the league in scoring, last in the Big 12 internal offense. So huge confidence building. What do they do here? Third and 13, open across the middle. Scales reaching, way short. Lofton makes the tackle. But they've also gotten themselves out of a little bit of a hole and have a chance to still win the field position back. And that's what they're doing. They can pin Oklahoma back inside their 10-yard line here. and uh, English gets blows by the tight end and, and the tackle can't respond to that quickness I mean he is just an explosive kid and 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 really Diedrich has never seen anything like it I mean Diedrich barely got a hand on Austin English once he accelerates after that first step it's bye-bye Brantner a 40-yard punt his first time that's this one a little bit too much leg and it goes in the end zone so it'll come out to the 20 but the Cyclones have got to be excited. Inside a minute to go, first quarter, they lead 7 0 in Iowa State. We'll see their defense come on with OU having it at the 20. Sports Ultimate, Ultimate Nightly Highlight Show is here. It's the FSN final score. The only national show gives you nothing but wall to wall highlights. 
The FSN final score nightly at 10.30 p.m. only on FSN. It's the way to stay up to date on the latest sports action. Well, what Iowa State is, is trying to do is stay in the football game till the fourth quarter. Then you never know what can happen, just like what Colorado did up there. Oklahoma, you mentioned wanting to establish that running game, and Oklahoma had a little trouble doing so here in the first quarter. Rubin makes the tackle this time. That's not booing, that's Ruben. Murray, the ball carrier on that play. First down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Live better with Overstock.com. It's all about the O. And in establishing that running game, Bill, more consistently is staying with your blocks, not letting guys get across your face and falling off blocks. Oklahoma still not finishing blocks like they should. Marco Murray, they fake to him. Bradford in trouble, scrambling, looking for help, and just has to tuck it under. Ruben makes the tackle, and that will be the final play of the first quarter. Homecoming crowd on a glorious day for football here in Ames, Iowa, and the Cyclones stunning the Sooners so far. Great coverage. They plastered every receiver Iowa State did. End of the first quarter. Iowa State 7, Oklahoma nothing. Now a word for Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Beautiful, breezy fall day here in Ames, Iowa, and Iowa State with a 7-0 lead. And how about this for Oklahoma? Zero points in that first quarter, only the third quarter of the entire season that they haven't scored in. OU averaging 48 points a game, third in the league, fourth in the nation. Oklahoma has it third and six on their 24-yard line to start the second quarter. Brown in the backfield as Bradford comes up to talk to his lineman with a play. Sam Bradford stepped up in the pocket, got a man, and is complete to Brown. And Brown has the first down across the 30-yard line. Elvin Bell made the tackle. Now Brown had three touchdowns and 67 yards rushing in that Missouri win last week. Wow, Christopher beat low ball at the line of scrimmage quickly on the protection. And but you get the ball out of the quarterback's hand that quickly, and Brown presents himself as a great target throwing the football to. You know, you get those running backs in space, it's like a long lateral, and then they can make people miss. First and ten on the 32. Kelly flips it off. And coming to the near side, Iglesias and Iowa State stayed home. And Jesse Smith makes the tackle and is a sophomore punt. I could not tell you how good a play he made. He stayed at home. He was blocked. He came off the block and made a one-on-one -on -one tackle in space against the wide receiver. Jesse Smith, gold star on your forehead. Watch 54 in the red jersey. He's being blocked by Lodebolt, comes off the block and makes a one-on-one -on -one tackle. That is linebacker play at its best. Shed the blocker, bring the receiver down in space. Second and nine. Bradford, incomplete. He was under some pressure intended for Iglesias. If you're thinking, oh, you overlooked Iowa State, it's not because the coach didn't say something to his ball club about be careful of the underdog. Well, it's just pretty obvious to anyone that's paid attention at, at all of what's gone on through the whole year that anyone can beat anybody if, if you're not at your best. So, um, you know, that's that's always the case. And, and again, it's been evident this year more than any. And they, they, they experienced it in Colorado. He took the list of upsets to his, his players in the locker room in Oklahoma, Colorado. was one of the games on that list. And he's trying to drive the point home, but you can talk to your blue in the face. Bradford complete across the middle at the 50 and first down Oklahoma at the 49 of Iowa State 18 yards on the pickup Gresham is a big horse Gresham is 6'6 six, six. and Gresham has got a size speed ratio he's faster than linebackers he's bigger than safeties and the ball is threaded between the linebackers and safeties and the play is made, and that's a very good target to go to when things are crazy around you, and it settles it down. He had two of the six touchdowns in the Texas game. It was huge down in the Cotton Bowl. Looking for him again. He got turned around, and the ball was behind. 
And it'll be a second and ten for the Sooners as Brown was covering in the secondary for Iowa State. There's a look at Bradford today. But he tell you he's not happy because there were two plays where Oklahoma had receivers past the field that could have been touchdowns that he missed on. Yeah, he, he underthrew Iglesias and he and he overthrew uh, Kelly. Kelly. And, and it's, you know, 6 for 11, that's almost 50% for the season. He's 20 points higher than that. He's not throwing the ball as accurate as he has. Second and 10 at the 49. Brown. And Brown forges ahead Brown, to the 43-yard right line. Banks. John Banks Big makes the tackle. Well, we we'll talk about offense and what Oklahoma. Well, NCAA scoring leaders, Hawaii number one. Look at the Big 12. Kansas, yeah. Tech, and then Oklahoma. In, in Oklahoma, number four right there. How about three teams from the Big 12 almost hanging half a hundred on people with more than half season's on? You know, everybody. Run the football. Hey, these teams can spread it and chuck it to him and, and score points. Kansas is a huge one today at Colorado in the north. Third and four at the 43. Brown turns it up at the right time. He's got the first down for the Sooners to the 37 yard line of Iowa State before East Bowen, the senior linebacker out of East Orange, New Jersey, makes the tackle. There's Brown's work last week. Why Oklahoma is so tough to defend. They started Patrick today. They had Murray in there for a play or two. Brown seems to be the guy that's hot again. Yeah, and, and Chris Brown, the defensive back for Iowa State, he missed the tackle. Chris Brown made Chris Brown miss and turned it up inside for a first down. Brown again. It's a couple before he stopped in the 33. Bell and Jesse Smith, the tacklers for the Cyclones. And Oklahoma trying to get the trying to get the mix going, the, the run and pass mix. And you know, you make a play like was made in space by Jesse Smith. You know, you, you get fired up and you start to get involved in, in, in other things in the middle of the line of scrimmage. And Oklahoma has such a such a size advantage over Iowa State in the pits. Iowa State is going to have to move and stunt and slant. They can't stand there and be a sitting target for those big boys from Oklahoma. Second and five play action to Patrick. Bradford steps up, got time, got a man. Kelly, and he can't come down with it in the end zone. A little high. James Smith makes the hit in the secondary. And Malcolm Kelly with Bob Stoops to tell you has got the best hands he's ever seen on a wide receiver. Well, that would have been some grab. He's got the biggest, and boy, he has got big hands for his body size, his body type. And the ball seems to be floating on, on Bradford. I mean, he's had balls float on him that have just kind of come down the, down the football field. This one wobbling a little bit, floating. He usually throws a tighter spiral with a lot more velocity than he's thrown today. I, I don't know how much the wind is a factor down there. It's kind of ripping on top of those goalposts on the, on the end of, that Oklahoma's going to. Third and five for the Sooners. Down seven zip. Bradford tries to deliver incomplete. Receiver trip. Yeah. Trip coming back to the football that time as Andrew Tennell and Bell was covering. Bell was right there though. It was just a great job in coverage and as planted to try to come back to the football, he went right out from under him. So a fourth and five for Oklahoma and with the ball at the 33 and a 50 yard field goal attempt, they'll just go ahead and go for it. DeMarco Murray alongside Bradford. There's Murray in some space. Bradford's got room, though. He does not get it. Oh, my. Singleton came up from the secondary. Did he pop Bradford? Yes, he did. And I'll tell you what, Bradford had an available target out there. It was DeMarco Murray. And I think he didn't realize that he had room to negotiate to get to the line of scrimmage because Singleton sold out to get it. He could have just lobbed the ball to Murray in space. But Bradford committed to the run, and, and Singleton made him pay. Right here, he's thinking, thinking. Now he tucks it, and he still, Singleton blows him up. But DeMarco Murray on the sideline was wide open for him to just loft the ball. And he was open the whole time. And with his kind of wiggle, to me, you got to get him the football. First to 10, Iowa State. Cyclone trying to bring it back on the ground. You know what this is that four down stop right there is like the second takeaway for Iowa State it's just like 
forcing the fumble and recovering it. Now Bradford, here's the line of scrimmage that he had. He, he could have dumped it right here. Look at Murray. He could, it, right here, he could have lofted the football to Murray easily. Look at coming available, crossing down the football field a little bit further. Is a guy who can make plays for you, Malcolm Kelly. But, but Bradford got in space. I think he lost track of exactly where the line of scrimmage was. He said, okay, I, I have to commit now. And I think he thought he had to commit before he really did. Second 11 for Iowa State. 10.35 to go first half. Cyclones up 7 zip. End around. And again, it works. And bursting through across the 40 is Hamilton again. And Marquise Hamilton's become a primary playmaker, a 13-yard pickup before Walker tackles him there. And as you said earlier, Bill, he knows a lot of these players from Oklahoma. I mean, he calls a lot of these starters for the Sooners on a regular basis. And there's nothing sweeter than making some plays against the number five ranked BCS football team, Oklahoma Sooners, when you're an Oklahoma guy. Brent Venables, a defensive coordinator, looking on, wondering what's happened to his defense. First to 10 at the 43 now for the Cyclones. Hamilton, of course, out of Edmund North there in the Oklahoma City area. He's made some big plays for the Cyclones in the first half here. OU toughens up against the run on this one, though. Game is running. You know, last year, one of the highlights for Iowa State in that game that we showed you earlier in Norman was Meyer going to Blythe. And he got three receptions on the day. This was the 31-yarder for a TD. And so let's not forget Blythe at any time in this game, day. No, he's got 29 touchdown catches, 26 times. He's hooked up with Brett Meyer, his roommate and best friend. And first down is the down. We saw the graphic right before we went to that little flashback. Oklahoma is averaging 2.7 yards per play on first down. Iowa State a half a yard on first down. Both teams are going second and long, third and long way too often. Pretty lofty company that Blythe has a chance to join. This one is complete. Hamilton to 50. Push for the first down. We'll see where he spots the football. I think he's got it, though. As DJ Wolf, the tackler, that was a heck of a catch by Hamilton. It was, and Hamilton was offered an opportunity to walk on at Oklahoma. They didn't offer him a scholarship. They said, you can walk on. Well, he said, I'm going to go to Iowa State and try to do this type of thing, reach behind my body, show the flexibility and the hands. He turned those hips so well and made the catch, completely turning himself around, and then got to show the pad squared up and got every yard he couldn't get the first down. So not only the catch, but getting north and south and generating the first down, a fresh set of downs for Iowa State. Gives them ball possession, ball control. It limits the exposure of Oklahoma's offense against their defense. Right now, Iowa State is doing what they want. They want time and possession and, and move chains. That was Hamilton's third reception for 25 yards, two carries for 13 yards. And it sets up the clones, first and 10 at the 47 of Oklahoma. Meyer bought some time, and to Blythe, and out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Nick Harris makes the tackle as Blythe gets his first reception of the day, a 15-yard pickup. He needs four more now to pass Lane Danielson, the all-time receiving leader. He is the all-time yards leader, seventh in Big 12 history. You know, Bill, on that play, I didn't like what I saw. Nick Harris started chewing out Marcus Walker. Marcus Walker made a mistake. Then he went to the sideline. Brett Venables chewed him out to correct him. You can't afford those kind of mental errors that Walker had in coverage. First and 10 at the 32. Scales, little power. He got a little hole, made the most of it. And he pushes down to the 20. Seven yard line, DJ Wolf, the senior from Lawton, Oklahoma, stops him after a five yard game. You can see Iowa State's confidence building. And every single snap that goes by, they're saying, We can compete with Oklahoma. Now, if Iowa State takes a two score lead of any fashion here, if they can punch this in for a field goal, or more specifically, if they can put two touchdowns on the board before Oklahoma scores, what a lift. Then Oklahoma has a tiger by the tail today, folks. This is a team that's only victory was over Iowa 15-13 when they didn't even score a touchdown. Scales brought down near the 30 and a flag on the play. They got Hamilton for an illegal block Holding in the back. Offense number 92. 10 yard penalty. It's 82. Second down. That's it. I don't think there's 92 out there on offense. I think it's 82. I think it's Hamilton. 
out, out there right. in the perimeter that made that made the that made the play. Meyer with his passing work today, now moving to second all time in Big 12 history in career passing. You know, and like we said, this is his 44th consecutive start. That's a guy that takes care of himself. There's an element of luck involved because he's been hit. And he's been sacked a few times. And right now, the, the Sooner sideline is in a state of disbelief. Uh, they, they cannot believe that into halfway through the second quarter, it's a 7 0 football game. Iowa State's favorite. Second and 15 for Iowa State here. Meyer got away from some, the 30. And Meyer stopped by Curtis Loft and showed you some wheels there down to the 28. Nine yards on the pickup for Brett Meyer. Alonzo Dotson was nipping at his heels, and, and Dotson had a good pass rush, but he just could not quite finish it. And, and Meyer, you know, had that had that ability to, to sense it. And, and he gets away from Dotson, and then he just takes the positive yard. He's making good decisions in the pocket when to tuck it and go. He did it in the first drive of the game. That's another good decision. Don't force the ball down the field late. Oklahoma's got too much recoverability speed, and they'll pick it off. Meyer has scored two touchdowns on the ground this year. He's got some legs with him. Here is Blythe. And good, tough tackle by Lindy Holmes that time as Blythe tried to put on the brakes and scoot up field. Holmes had nothing to do with it. No, that's not going to happen. Yeah, he redirected himself as quickly as Blythe did. Nice job in space by Lindy Holmes to make that sure a hit. Holmes, a junior out of Dallas, 6'1", 196. Oklahoma defense that has only been allowing 303 yards of offense. And Iowa State's having its way, 7-0, with a timeout at 6.20 to go, first half. And Iowa State's O today, 121 yards of offense to Oklahoma's 91, and most importantly, a 7-0 lead. And the touchdown, though, came about because of an Oklahoma turnover, set up Iowa State for 35-yard short drive, and they made the most of it. They're going for it here on fourth down with a long four, short five. At the 27-yard line, Meyer for the side ball. He's going to keep it. And Meyer wow. got the first down. Meyer to the 21. Austin English made the tackle. And the Cyclones keep possession and a new set of downs. And that was a design quarterback draw. I mean, Meyer, it was, there was, he was not, he had no intention really of throwing that football. And, and he, he basically takes his drop and then he's, it's a draw play. It's a quarterback draw and he gets up the football field and he does a nice job of finishing the run. Austin English trying to pull him down from behind. And, and the body lean that Meyer had continued him lurching forward for the necessary yards to move the change. They are more physical right now than the Sooners. You see that figure, OU gives up 65 yards a game, 64 already today. And they're gonna have a little razzle-dazzle here and it wasn't open, so as a result, the receiver did the smart thing and just tucked it under. Hamilton, Yeah, he, he was trying to throw it back to Brett Meyer. Oklahoma not moved whatsoever. They brought Hamilton on the reverse to throw back to Brett Meyer and it was not there. Here, Brett Meyer here is leaking and here's the throw, the throwback, not there, so tuck it and, and don't do anything dangerous. It's only first down. Tuck it, get back to the line of scrimmage, loop for another down, second and 10. That's a smart decision. Second and 10 at the 21 of Oklahoma. 5-16 and counting, first half remaining. Cyclones up 7-0. Meyer. Gives to Scales. And Scales moves to inside the 18. Reggie Smith makes the tackle. I mean, last week we saw a similar play that we saw a moment ago, except it was Blythe to Meyer. Yeah, a little, a little reverse, and, and, and Blythe delivers the ball to Meyer. And this time, they instead of running it to the right side of the field, they run it to the opposite side. The throwback is to the left side of the field, and, and potentially if Meyer was open. But Oklahoma saw that on tape against Texas and said, you know, watch any of these receivers can do that. They tried to incorporate Hamilton instead of Blythe. Oklahoma still not free. Texas beat them last week 56 to 3 and held Iowa State to 228 yards of offense. It is a different Cyclone team as Meyer a little bit underthrown here to Blythe this time and Baker may have gotten a touch on it too. Yeah, Baker at least got airborne to distort the division. 
save up to 10 on a brand name products from Overstock. First down markers brought to you by Overstock.com. Live better with Overstock.com. It's all about the O. Have to be sound here as a place kicker for Iowa State. And it's snap, hold, kick, all three phases of it. Oklahoma under Bob Stoops has blocked 20 kicks. 36 yarder for Brett Culberson as long as a 42. Oh, this one's got oh, the distance, it. but he does not hit it. Oh, he pushed it way wide. So Culberson misses the opportunity to put him up 10. We'll be right back after a timeout. Honda would like to take you for a drive around campus. Building on tradition is the theme of homecoming this year here at Iowa State. Some folks were scratching their heads saying, oh, wait a minute, they scheduled Oklahoma for homecoming? A team you haven't beaten here since 1960? Well, maybe the schedule makers knew something. Homecoming here in Ames and Iowa State, still a long way to go, but the Cyclones and Todd Blythe lead at 7-0. Bill Land, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox with you here at Jack Trice Stadium as Oklahoma has a first and 10 on the 20. Patrick in the backfield behind the quarterback. Bradford gives it to Alan Patrick, turns the corner, 25-30, and a flag is thrown as he is stopped at the 35-yard line. Chris Brown making the stop. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to call a big offensive lineman out in space. Brian Simmons was out there. I'm not sure if they called holding on Oklahoma or not. Offense number four. Yep. Yard okay. penalty, first down. Well, that's going to, that'll be during the course of the action. It'll still be first down. You know, the thing that Iowa State can't afford to do, like they did in their first drive to Texas last week, got in the red zone, got a penalty, put the field goal. This time, push the field goal, can't leave points on the board. And right here is the call that they made. Got the hands inside the framework of the body. And you know what? I didn't see much illegal there. I think the official saw the conclusion of the play where he was knocked to the turf, Singleton was, and then called the penalty. There's the 10 again. And Patrick, some hard-earned yards as he goes to near the 27, 28 yard line. Smith and Banks made the tackle. What was the defensive coordinator Wayne Bold of Iowa State told us yesterday? He went back and looked at that Texas tape and said, 10 plays right. for about 240 35 yards, yards, 35 yeah. yards. He yeah. said, guys, generally we played pretty well, but those big plays, lack of concentration here, they just killed us. OU hasn't had the big play yet. No, they haven't, and it's been the quarterback, Sam Bradford's had a couple of big play opportunities, could not pull the trigger accurately. Right now. Second and two. And the OU sideline is Johnson. In my mind, though, Bill, the biggest reason this is still seven to nothing is Oklahoma has not got their running game going consistently, and Iowa State's running the ball more effectively than I thought they would against Oklahoma. Coming in, Oklahoma's averaging over five yards a carry, the opponent less than two, 1.9. That's not the case today. Iowa State is actually handling the ground game better than the Sooners, and that's the biggest reason it's seven to nothing Iowa State. OU 13 carries, 48 yards. Iowa State 67 yards on the ground. Bradford, good time. Oh. Incomplete, intercepted. Picked off by the Cyclones. That ball just popped right up. And Keel going at the 20, the 30 yard line. And Alvin still Bell still taking going. the whole stadium with him. Amazing. Oh, Mama, what a play. And Gresham let the ball get into his shoulder pads. Gresham was the intended receiver, and he didn't get his hands out to catch it. Let it come into his pads, bounced off his shoulder pads, went airborne, and you talk about determination and want to finish plays. Man, oh man, Alan Bell. And watch Gresham. He's there. It's The ball is right on top of him. Got to get your hands extended off your shoulder pads. The interception is made. Now watch what happens. Everybody One. picks a block up. And watch him lower his shoulder pads right here and drive. Five. Ten extra <laughs> yards. Amazing effort. They're in the red zone again. Two takeaways. Plus two on the season. Coming in there at minus ten. First pick of the year for Bell. First to ten at the 18 for Iowa State. Scales. Fifteen. And he sprints down near the 10 yard line where Marcus Walker makes the tackle after a seven yard pickup for Jason Scales. And remember, in the first 10 takeaways of the season, Iowa State only scored 13 points. This is their 
12th takeaway now. On the 11th takeaway, they scored a touchdown. What will they do on the 12th? Number 12 made the 12th uh, takeaway of the season, Alan Bell. And not only the interception, that's as good a run after interception as I have ever seen. Second down and three, the ball on the 11. Scales. Close to the first down near the eight yard line. Gerald McCoy, a six foot four, 289 pound redshirt freshman from Oklahoma City, making the stop for the Sooners. How many times have we said it? It's elementary. Receivers have to catch the football with their hands. Iowa State is outrushing Oklahoma. That is the crux of what is going on in this football game. The line of scrimmage is being won by our Iowa State, and I don't think anybody expected that. Third and one for Iowa State. And the Cyclones close to getting it here. We'll see. A little short. Yeah, going to be a little short, so big decision for Gene Chizik as Pleasant made the tackle that time. I think you got to put the points on the board. You've got to go up two scores. But, you know, it's easy to say, you know what, we're going for it. You know, this is our opportunity. When we get down here again, if we can go two scores up on Oklahoma, that would be monstrous. Two touchdowns up instead of just two scores. Biggest play of the game right here, right now. He may just try to get him to jump offside. But if they go for it, Iowa State has to get some movement. Meyer hands it off. Nope. Oklahoma stops him. They won the push that time. Yes, they do. And Lofton and crew. Granger was there. And Oklahoma gets the ball back on downs. Wow. Oh, great wow. defense for the Sooners. They still trail 7 0. And Jim. Thank you very much, Michael. Oklahoma on their first and 10 with a minute five to go. Alan Patrick brought down by Jesse Smith as Iowa State took the first big risk of the day, going for it on a fourth and one at the nine yard line. They don't get it back. They lose on the play. Now can OU do something in the final minute? Second and seven to Bradford. Whistles and the play is brought to a halt. You know, I think as I as I try to go through Gene Chiswick's decision making, Culbertson missed the 36-yard field goal wide right by 10 yards wide right. I mean, he wasn't even close. So maybe he thought, you know what, fourth down, let's let's not put it in, in the control of this uh, destiny in, in, in my kicker who just missed. How about fourth and less than a yard? My offensive line's been coming off the ball well. Let me show some confidence in him. And now, by that decision, he's telling his defense, you got to stop Oklahoma from yeah. being out. But I thought, you know, go out there and maybe try to draw him offside with a hard count and get a first down by penalty. But when they went for it, Oklahoma was up to the task and, and knocked him back, which he missed from uh, 36 and didn't get a chance to redeem himself. But it wasn't just a close miss. He missed big time wide right. Well, and this has been the problem of Iowa State. Remember when they played in Nebraska? They Chase went over there. The game clock back to 56 seconds. There's a clock issue. Let's send it down to Jim. All right, thank you, Bill. Coming up on the Attache Halftime Show, we'll join Michael Eves and Marco Farr in the studio. They'll take a look at the Texas Baylor game. A little upset going on there as well. Also, Tom 25 scoreboard. And these guys, you're ready for halftime, huh? Nazi, you still got that hair in Whitman? They wanted to know if I wanted some paint, big guy. I'm going to save it for you. <laughs> as long as there's salt and pepper on it, he might eat it. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I'm, I'm not much of a uh, seasoning or condiment guy. I just like the deal. I, I just like to have the, the actual food. They can they keep all the seasonings and the condiments. <laughs> a little clock issue, and Gene Chizik very upset. Still yeah. waiting for an explanation. The officials are still gathered here. The point, though, Dave, on Iowa State was going to be, remember Nebraska, where they moved the ball against the Huskers all day. They ended up losing by a wider margin, and it may have indicated how well they played, but they lose 35-17. They had 102 plays, but they couldn't take advantage of turnovers. Right. And today, even though they're leading 7-0, they get a big interception. They get nothing out of it, right. and they miss not a chip shot, but a very makeable field goal. Boy, against Oklahoma, you got to take advantage of every good opportunity you get. You can't leave points on the field, and they have left points on the field. 
and, and I think going up two scores would have been huge, but Oklahoma comes off the football and absolutely crushes. And that was a big fourth down play. And that was just a tremendous defensive charge by Demarcus Granger, who is the USA Defensive Player of the Year when he was coming out of high school. And Gene Chizik is going crazy about that clock issue. They set it to 54 seconds. It's going to be second down and seven. But if nothing else, this Iowa State crowd now that it kind of lost a little of its pop because of that fourth down play. Now they're back into the game. And now the officials are holding up. We may have a review here to take a look at the clock. And you know what? On the tape to see exactly what they want to do. And, and you have to give some credit in this football game to the Oklahoma defense as well. I mean, the Oklahoma Red Zone defense is the reason that Oklahoma is still in this football game by a 7 to nothing score. If Oklahoma's Red Zone defense had buckled, the score could be 13, 17, 20 to nothing. But, but Oklahoma's Red Zone defense has stood up, and, and that's the only aspect of uh, their defensive performance that's uh, cut the mustard today. And offensively, Oklahoma's still not consistently running the football, and Bradford, as a result of that, has been spotty, particularly in the, in the long passing game, uncharacteristically underthrowing, overthrowing. the game clock to 44 seconds. And Gene Chizik just won the 10 seconds and the debate. The problem was one of the officials thought there had been a first down and stopped the clock. As a result, they had to go back. Now, why they didn't come to the replay much sooner and make sure they got it right, I don't know. But the main thing is they got it right. And there's 44 seconds, second and seven, the ball on the 15. Oklahoma trailing 7 0. Here is Bradford. Under pressure, and he is sacked inside the 10 yard line. Wow. Bryce Broxma, a seven yard loss, and is that defense of the Cyclones fired up? Yeah, they really are. And Broxma and Rubin are doing a nice job inside as the defensive tackles pushing the pocket. Now, well, Oklahoma has not been sacked many times this season. Uh, in, in fact, they've done an outstanding job in that regard. Their sack differential on the year is plus 20. Well, in Iowa State, 12th in the league in points allowed. They've been giving up nearly 33 points a game. They're pitching a good shutout at halftime. Unbelievable effort by the Iowa State Cyclones. They had more energy, intensity, and enthusiasm in the first half. It's not over yet. They're now calling the players back on the field. Man, what's going on with this clock? Goodness <laughs> gracious. Put four seconds on the game clock. They're going to run a snap. Four yeah. more seconds to play. Four seconds on the game clock, please. Players scatter. That's Iowa State's final timeout of the half. Iowa State called a timeout. They're hoping to get the ball back one more time. We'll or be back for the fumble. conclusion. It's fumble on the snap. <laughs> Welcome back, QSRS College Football Saturday. As we got four seconds to go in the second quarter here. As following the timeout, it is third and 14 for Oklahoma. You would think they would just snap it and down it. And yep. Sam Brad no fun in this first half. As Iowa State now with this huge crowd of around 50,000 here at Jack Trice Stadium, getting quite an ovation as Gene Chizik and his Cyclones with a 7-0 lead at that break. They didn't play a perfect half build. They left some points on the field, but they played a darn good first half. And then what they did, they played a perfect half in terms of intensity, emotion, excitement. Uh, Oklahoma did not match their intensity coming out of the gate, and Iowa State gained all kinds of confidence. They held OU to 109, so nine yards of total offense. Let's send it down now to Jim Knox with head coach Gene Chizik. All right, thank you, Bill. Coach, what was going on right there right before half? Time issue? Well, it was a time issue right now. We wanted to see what they would do, see if they try to run it. We could slap the ball out, knock the ball. You never know what's going to happen on that last play, so we just called a timeout to see if we could do something, but they took a knee. you got to be extremely pleased the way your team is playing. You talked about being physical before the game. You guys right now controlling the line of scrimmage. Well, I think we're playing okay right now. Uh, you know, we got to convert some more first downs. We get down to the red zone, we got to score. We're terrible right now in the red zone. Real quick, what are you going to tell your team at halftime? they got to keep playing. This thing's half over, and uh, they played okay so far. we got we got to take it to another level in the second half to beat these guys. Thank you, Coach. Right now, let's head to the entire...
overthrown balls, underthrown balls. In the second half, I asked him, what do you expect to do here? He says, we've got to get that running game going. Look for the running game to possibly get going here in the second half. I'm sure that was an animated talk that Bob Stoops gave his team at halftime. And for Iowa State is, they left points on the field, Bill. They didn't take advantage of every opportunity presented to them, and they're only ahead a score. Yeah, you would think if you're going to pull off an upset of this stature, you would have to take advantage of particularly those short drive situations. Play action. Meyer on first down. Wide open. Hamilton got it in midfield. Man, oh, man. Harris, the tackler. They pick up 30 just like that. Hamilton, you know, he says, I know you guys. I'm from Oklahoma. I can play against you guys. And Hamilton has made plays. And out of the I formation, a little play action pass. Brent Meyer has plenty of vision. And there's a huge cavity, huge hole in the zone that Hamilton takes advantage of. And Meyer says, just like we drew it up at halftime. Fourth reception of the day for Hamilton now. For 55 yards. And first and 10 at midfield. Scales hit hard at the line of scrimmage this time. Leading the way was DJ Wolf. First half yeah. possessions here today for Iowa State. Well, here's the deal. Short field, touchdown. That was a takeaway. Deal here, short field after the takeaway. Lost the ball on downs. That's what we're talking about. Have to take advantage. They did once. They didn't this time, and that, that, those are, and that missed that 36-yard field goal wide right. You know, if you, could, you could, if you could have put six or 10 or 14 more points on the board, it would be a very different story right now. Second and 10 for the Cyclones here. Up 7-0. First possession, second half. And hand for their Meyer in throws it away, avoiding the sack. It's a good play, you know. Don't don't force it. Don't if something's not there. Don't try to make something be there. Throw it away out of pocket. No intentional grounding then, and reload. Meyer nine of 13 for 93 yards. Got that 30-yard pickup on the first play here of the second half. Bradford today eight of 16 for 72 yards. Has had one picked off, and he has missed pretty badly on a couple of other plays that might have been touchdowns. I can't say how well Iowa State's defense played in the first half, though. Shutting Oklahoma out. They set up the screen, but not enough there. And Scales is met by Curtis Lofton, the junior from Kingfisher, Oklahoma. Yeah, that, that's somebody that, uh, that's going to spark his football team. Lofton is a big play waiting to happen. And that was a big play right there. And Iowa State, you know, they had, a, they had a nice little mix. Threw the ball well, ran it effectively. They established some sort of running game, and Hamilton stepped up. You know, they're taking Blythe out of it. Hamilton is winning his one-on-one -on -one matchups and supporting the ground game with his ability to catch it. Iowa State now shifts into the punting formation with Brantner back there to kick it away. And Franks, along with Smith, are deep. Franks with a 22. And <laughs> wow, he did. Tell me, Iowa State being physical every second they can be. They're laying the leather on folks. David Wonders made that tackle after a 30-yard punt. And Oklahoma, after being shocked on that first down play, then stiffens and holds, and now the Sooners get it back on their own 23-yard line. And in the first half, two giveaways, and got nothing done. They lost the ball on downs. They had two giveaways. They punted the football, zero points. See how the Sooners respond. Nothing on first down. Allen Patrick brought down by Jesse Smith. Patrick five carries 29 yards in the first half. And we'll take a look at those first half leaders for Oklahoma as their total offense was 109 yards. Bradford, you that, see the pick? That interception wasn't his fault. Gresham should make that play. It was a perfect throw. Now, Alan Patrick ran the ball for a nice average, but in the first half, Oklahoma only ran the ball 15 times. Iowa State 24. Bradford in trouble. Got a nice block. Chance to unload, and he does. 
Singleton covering on the play. Iglesias, the receiver, near the ball, but Bradford doing the smart thing there, just getting rid of it, avoiding the sack. Uh, we, we talked about it in the first half. Defensively against Texas last week, they gave up 235 yards in 10 plays. They self-destructed. They flinched, they froze, they made a sign of errors. Today, they haven't. I mean, everybody's playing their responsibilities. They're in the right gaps. They're getting off the blocks, and they're hitting people. Murray in the lineup, along with Bradford. Now he comes up to the line of scrimmage. Third and 10. Big third down for Iowa State's defense as much as OU's offense. Kelly got the reception. Did he get the first down? Need to get to the 33. He's going to get a good spot out of it. And Alvin Bell was covering on the play, and that might move the chains. Yeah, I think so. He ran the comeback route. When did he have possession of the football, and how far did he come back? As Kelly runs his pattern, Radford surveys the field. He's going to go to Malcolm Kelly on a about a 15 yard comeback pattern as he's coming back possession steps out but yeah between the 32 and 33 yard line gets a very favorable spot because he's closer he's past the 33 it looks like and remember how big would it be for Iowa State to hold on this first series you see though first down Oklahoma the crowd of course lets you know their disapproval and it was, it's where the ball is, not where his feet happen to be as he's working his way toward that sideline. And tough. Those are tough spots. And uh, it is a game of inches. Bottom line, Gene Chizik saying it shouldn't have been that close. We had him off schedule, had him third and long. We wanted, can't let him run the sideline comeback run on us. Kelly's third reception for 27 yards today. They throw it the other way here. Johnson got room to roll. 40, 45. And Malcolm, or the manual Johnson, Brought down by Chris Brown, but he picks up a first down with a 13-yard reception. And Iglesias got the block on Singleton. And that's what got it sprung. Watch the block out here that takes place. Right there. Get after it, kick him out. Now you got a little bit of a lane to, to run in. That's just a nice job. And one wide receiver blocking for his teammate on a wide receiver screen. Right up the middle this time as Murray carries the football. And Taylor makes the stop for the Cyclones, but OU in Iowa State territory near the 48-yard line. Oklahoma has three big physical blocking tight ends. And watch Finley's block right here. The whiff on the backside. Got to, got to get a little bit more body. If he can seal him off on the backside, he doesn't get a clean hit on Patrick, he may gain more yards. Third down, the second down and three. Murray has the first down and then lowers the shoulder with a little power to the 39. Chris Singleton, the tackler, but a first down on a 10-yard tote by DeMarco Murray, redshirt freshman from Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay, Kevin Wilson is saying, all right, let's run the football. You know, let's, let's anchor him a little bit, and, and Murray is a guy that can turn a, a just a regular play into a big play by making people miss. And Kevin Wilson uh, calling the plays out and, and, getting, and, and doing some good things. Well, they average over 200 yards a game on the ground, but they'll tell you their ground game isn't near what it could be. Murray breaking tackles and then scampers across the 30 down to near the 28 where John Banks gets credit for the stop. When, when Oklahoma is struggling with the tight end package they have, just bring in a few of those big boys. They have all their tight ends here right now, and they're just saying, okay, we're going to get between the hash marks and get physical with you, try to get a crease and let Murray make people miss. And all that took place. Everybody sustained their block, finished their block. Murray had some room to work with and had a nice run. Murray came in averaging 6.1 a carry, rather 6.3 a carry and nine touchdowns. Gresham resets on the right, first and 10 at the 28. And again, Oklahoma just power football. Marco Murray stopped by Ace Bowen of the Cyclones. But again, he takes it near the 17-yard line, 18 maybe. Well, Brody Eldridge, number 83 in the white jersey, is maybe the best blocker on the football team. And that time, he was the lead blocker through the hole. And Brody Eldridge did a heck of a job. Jesse Smith is a football player down out of the 23 for Iowa State, an injured player. Smith, the sophomore from Altoona, Iowa, 
couple of big plays in the first half and came in on the season with 46 tackles, including a dozen in the loss last week to Texas. And he made the play in space in the first half when he came off a load ball who was seeing right there in front of him, the big boy getting a little water, came off of his block and made a one-on-one -on -one tackle in space. It was incredible. OU on the move right now, an injured player on the field. We've got 10.05 to go in the third quarter. And Boatholt had a, had a tough first half. Struggled a little bit, but the offensive line is getting more physical in this drive, Bill. Timeout called. We'll be right back at Jack Trice Stadium in Ames, Iowa. Iowa State, here is how Jesse Smith got hurt on that last play for Iowa State. Take a quick look here. Life can be tough in the pits. 54 in the red jersey, trying to take on blockers. Stands people up. Look at his feet. Gets his feet caught up underneath them. Right foot comes out, left doesn't. Lower body injury. Chris Brown comes in for his first carry in the second good, half. Motors to near the 11-yard line before another Chris Brown of the Cyclones tackles him. Let's send it down to Jim Knox. All right, good news for Iowa State fans. Jesse Smith is A-OK. -okay. They were looking at his left ankle. He got up off the bench, ran it down the sidelines a couple times. He's just about to head back in, guys. On that play that Jesse Smith got hurt on, Oklahoma had all three of their tight ends in the game, and Brody Eldridge, the third tight end, lined up at fullback as he is right now. 83 is lined up at fullback for Oklahoma right here. That's a tight end. Watch him lead block. Brown, three touchdowns last week, takes this one inside the 10 down to near the 7. Ace Bowen makes the tackle. He OU had 37 yards rushing in the first half on this first series. Murray had 37 yards on four carries. Now Brown taking over. And Kevin Wilson, the offensive coordinator, saying, boys, let's get physical, physical. I mean, they're right now in the first half, Iowa State was more physical than Oklahoma. And this drive, Oklahoma is establishing their will at the line of scrimmage. Alert. Brown again in the backfield here. Brown scoots into the end zone and touchdown Oklahoma. Chris Brown, his fourth touchdown of the year and his fourth in two weeks after that trifecta against Mizzou last week in Oklahoma, a PAT from tying it up. And what you have to have is blocking on the backside. Look at the hole of the seam. Watch the backside seal right there, Gresham. Great job of seal blocking and giving the lane, cut back lane. Look at Gresham, seal him off on the backside. The front side washes people away. Backside gets the cutoff block. And everybody says, Lord. Holt says, that's six. Hartley, 40 of 46 in the PAT. And the kick is up and good. And the Sooners have tied it up on their first drive of the second half with 8.35 to go in the third quarter. 7-7, Iowa State, Oklahoma here in beautiful Ames, Iowa. Welcome back, Jack Trice Stadium in Ames, Iowa. Cyclones and Sooners hooked up in a dandy. 7-7, Iowa State in Oklahoma. Chris Brown getting the touchdown a moment ago for Oklahoma to knot it up on Hartley's kick. A Kawasaki scoring drive for Oklahoma. Their opening possession of the second half, 11 plays, 77 yards. And Brown, the eight-yard tote, he required 414. On the kickoff for Hartley. Robinson and Sumrall are deep. It goes over their heads. And it'll be first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Next week, college football Saturday returns a triple header from the Pac-10. Starts with college football Saturday's kickoff show presented by Kiyosara. And how about these matchups? Number 14, Southern Cal, 10th rated Oregon, followed by UCLA, Washington State, and then the nightcap, 12th rated Cal, and 8th rated and unbeaten Arizona State. Yeah, Bill Mollica, proud of Long, our director extraordinaire. We'll probably promote that game another dozen times before we leave you today. It all begins Saturday, 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific, and high def right here at FSN. How does some devil of them all? Philip Mollica. Let's see what the Cyclones have as far as answering with a tie. First and ten. Meyer, little pitch and catch to Sumrall. He gets about six. Wolf makes the tackle down to Jim Knox. Well, I'll tell you what, different attitude right here on this Oklahoma bench here in the second half. A lot of high fives. Now, Cal Gundy, the running back coach, just went up and down his staff and told him, hey, four quarters, four quarters. Even though they don't have the lead, they still remember the Colorado game a few weeks ago, guys. That's the deal, Knox. You got to play 60 minutes. That was one of the keys for Oklahoma. 60 minutes, finishing the fourth quarter. Wait, 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 wait. Third and two. Ball on the four. 
Second down, I should say. Beg your pardon there. Now let's check in for Dr. Pepper. Game break. Here's Michael Eaves. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Number six, South Carolina also trying to do what Oklahoma's trying to do, rally in the second half. Chris Smelly looking for the end zone, but he's picked off by D.J. Moore. South Carolina's trailed this entire game. All time in the series, they lead Vanderbilt 14-2, but right now they trail in the second half by two scores. Let's send it back out to you guys. Got an injury uh, coming off the field to Marcus Granger. Came off the field holding that right arm a little bit. He's getting some medical attention. I don't know if it's the arm or the shoulder, but big 96 in the white right in the unit. Sabrata Dallas Kimball High School. Now it is third and four. Meyer to Sumrall. Good tackling by Oklahoma to deny the first down. That Sooner defense fired up as Wolf makes the stop and hangs on to R.J. Sumrall. You know, if I were the Oklahoma coaching staff, it would be an easy conversation for me at halftime. You guys care about this season. If you care about it, go out in the second half and play like you do care about it. If I'm Iowa State, Gene Chizik, I'm saying, guys, you have a, an opportunity to shock the world. Go out and play the second half like you played the first. I think it's going to be uh, tough sledding for Iowa State to match that first half they had, which was outstanding. Fourth and five from the 25, and Brantner with the punt here. An average of 39.7 a kick. This one bounces back toward midfield and be down there. OU, great field position for the second possession of the second half. We'll be right back on FSN. Iowa State crowd trying to get their deed. In. Another staunch effort with the game tied. An OU ball at midfield. Aflac providing us weekly trivia for you. Concerning our Kia Sara College Football Saturday, Brett Meyer, the ISU quarterback, third most plays in Big 12 history with over 1,740. Name the two players with more career plays. You jumped on this one, Bill. You were all over it in our production meeting. Well, he passed one of these guys in the passing yardage today. Yes, he did. Here's Oklahoma on first and ten. Well, Fumble! Well, and well, Iowa well. State's got it again! Amazing! The Cyclones get their third turnover of the day! He's going to be ruled down back at the 43, but that'll make no difference to Curtis Taylor, the junior from Fort Dodge, Iowa. Man, how about that? Three takeaways for Iowa State in, in two and a half quarters, and they only had ten in their first seven games. Ball security, you have to respect the football. Look at the Surin. Oklahoma coming off the line of scrimmage big time. And, and Murray was too high, and he got labeled. I mean, he got sandwiched. And, and hitting him right in the smush and making a big play. Bailey Johnson. And then he got some help from the other side. Oh. You, have, you have to turn it. You have to control it a little bit better than you did. And involved in the strip and coming up with the football is Taylor. Meyer comes out firing, and it is complete. And it'll be a first down, I believe, is Hamilton. Who else today? The Oklahoman trying to come back and haunt the Sooners. Well, if there's one guy that was ready to play this football game, it's Hamilton. Look at this. He's got a point to prove. Stretches out. Ooh. Oh, did he get his hands underneath he? that? Did the ground help him secure that? It was in front of the Iowa State bench, and they sold it hard to the official. Tough to see. Was, was the ball on the ground? Did the, oh, that's a tough one. But if they can run the play quickly, huh? they're yep. taking a look. The ball look, looked like, I'm not sure that the ground didn't help him secure that football. They are going to take another look at it. The replay official up top said that's too close, that's too dicey. Now it has to be indisputable evidence to overturn it. So the call in the field becomes huge in this yep. case. Because of what we just saw, and we'll wait and see to see what other angles there might be available, then it would be pretty difficult to overturn. You know, my, my opinion on those, like the officials did, if a guy makes that kind of effort, makes that kind of play, I give him the catch unless there's indisputable evidence that overturns it. I don't say, I'm going to punish you and say, even though you gave all that effort, you don't make the play. I mean, I say, if it's that close, and I, there's doubt in my mind, but the guy laid out and, and came, you know, he, he's making that kind of play, that's a catch. And let into the replay overturn me, but unless there's something that I didn't see, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And it's the same with an interception. I mean, if a defensive back is laying out making that kind of play, I give those guys the benefit of the doubt if they show that kind of extreme athleticism. I mean, look at this. He's laying out for the football, and he, he's got his hands underneath the ball. Okay, you he can't it? tell there. You couldn't right. overrule it on that. Because his body blocks it. You know, once the ball gets to the ground, here's the best angle. 
is, are, are his hands underneath it, or does the ball split his hands? And then his body falls over the top of it there. So it's hard to see once he's rolling around. Did the ground? Did he split his hands? Did the ground help him secure the football, or is it just a pure catch? I don't think they overturn it. And what the officials do in the replay booth is they many times try to piece the replay together to see what they can get from one angle, and then can they carry it over from another angle to get a reading on it. And right. I, I think it's going to be difficult. I'm not sure if he caught it or not, but and, I, and I, to, of what I've seen, that's difficult to overturn. And I say if the official had ruled incomplete, it would stand. If right. it rules complete, it would stand. That's why the call in the field becomes very, very important in these situations. And I, like I said for the reasons earlier, I agree with the call that the official made on the field. If a guy sells out like that, I reward him if I'm not sure. If replay shows something differently, so be it. After review, the play stands as called on the field. Yeah. That's the case. Can't and, argue with that. And I think uh, when uh, Bob Stoops and his crew look at what we saw, that they'll probably feel the same way, that uh, it was hard to overturn that. So Hamilton continues his banner day. And remember, he had 23 catches for the year coming in. Last year, six catches, 68 yards. Has yet to score a touchdown. That would make it the topper if he could pull that up. First and 10 at the 47 of Oklahoma. 5.54 to go, third quarter. Game tied. Play action after the fake and the ball's oh, batted up in the air. That's a loose one and falls. <laughs> Lyman heard it and then turn around. Bennett, I believe, is yeah. yeah. Corey Bennett's the one that got the touch on it, the junior out of San Antonio. He got the markers on it. And you're, it the quarterback hates hearing that thud. You know, the, he let he releases the football, and then he hears thud as big Corey Bennett gets the marker up on him. Whoop, right hand, boop, bat that bad boy airborne. Nobody there to make the play. Job by Bennett. So second and ten now for Iowa State. Sumrall looking for a pick. Flag thrown. Might have got a hole. They got Hamilton. Yeah. yeah. As he goes across the 40-yard line. Walker was trying to separate from him, and Hamilton had a big old handful of jersey. Holding 82 on the offense. 10-yard penalty. Second down. Oklahoma really struggled on first down offensively in the first half. They've done a much better job in the second half. There, there's the jersey being ripped and stretched a little bit. That's what the, the hold was all about. And it was right at the point of attack. You know, it's the reason that his teammate could cut up inside. But yesterday when we watched Iowa State work out briefly, we saw a lot of this, though, of quick hit, yep. get rid of the football quickly, try to do anything you can to nullify that defense in front of uh, Oklahoma. Absolutely. When they stayed in the pocket, tried to throw it down the field, Bennett batted it, you know, get the ball to the edge in space quickly, get it out of his hand. Second and 16. Meyer to throw here. In trouble. Steps up. Dives forward, still going to be third and around 10. Baker making the tackle. Lewis Baker, a senior out of Carrollton, Texas for Oklahoma. What I like that Meyer's doing today, Bill, is I thought in the past he's trying to do too much. You know, trying to make too many reads, do too much. Now he's being very decisive. My first or second read's not there. I'm going to I'm going to tuck it and get what I can and be very, very decisive in what I'm doing. Go to the next play. Yeah, and I think he's doing a much better job of managing the game this week, obviously, than he did last week against Texas. He's run five times for 27 yards. He is 9, 14 of 19 in the air for 110. Thrown again here, and is complete somehow. He broke one tackle, but shy of the first down marker as Curtis Lofton, again, is just a tackling machine for Oklahoma. He had 18 against Missouri, had that fumble recovery for a TD. Well, look at the hustle. Because Wolf, I think, on the edge is the one that misses the tackle. Yep. Wolf, Wolf misses, but look who's hustling inside out to make the play. Are you serious? That's a middle linebacker that runs faster on the football field than he does against the stopwatch. He is just a, a football player that's got great natural strength. He can plow the field without a horse, and he can and he runs faster on the field than he does being timed against the clock. He's a football player. Averaging nearly 12 tackles a game coming in. Mm -hmm. Iowa State will have to punt it on fourth and two, or so it would appear, on the 38-yard line. Reggie Smith is deep, and Mike Brantner kicks it away. Would like to put it inside the 20. 
Iowa State trying to tip it back, but they were carrying it into the end zone. So nice effort by the Cyclones, but it'll be a touchback. You only pick up 22 yards, 23 yards of field position there by it being a touchback. So people are probably thinking, Coach, it's fourth and two, you're one and six. Go for it, like you did in the first half. Yeah, and he's going, you got your go for it the first go round. Right, right. All right, Aflac trivia. We talked about Brett Meyer, third most plays in Big 12 history. Name the two players with more career plays. One of them, Brad Smith, he passed on the passing chart today. Right. The other, Cliff Kingsbury. Smith, the leader in plays. You see him this weekend, right? Yeah, Smith, the is, Jets. Smith is kind of like the slash for the New York Jets. Yep. And Oklahoma on a first to ten at the 20 yard line. You know, Bill, in the first half on first down, Oklahoma averaged 3 3 a snap. On their touchdown drive in the second half, they had three first down plays of over 10 yards. They averaged eight yards per snap in the first down. First down is huge for any football team, particularly Oklahoma, if they get that running game going. Alan Patrick, the lone back. Second and six. Stumbled a bit, now cuts outside. And fortunate after that to pick up a couple of yards. Third short coming up. James Smith, the free safety, and Jesse Smith, who injured that ankle, back on to make the tackle. Look at the divot that he took up at the 18 yard line. I mean, you're going to replace those divots. I mean, the field is coming up in chunks. And they will let you play on this course again. Man, when he made that cut, he took some, uh, he took some sod with him right there. Third and three, Oklahoma. Tie game. 253 and counting in the third quarter. They're at their 27 yard line. Average in motion. Resets in the right. Brown spins out of there. Got the first down. Second effort by Chris Brown as Elvin Bell makes the tackle. Jesse Smith penetrated and made the hit, but he didn't wrap his arms. There's a little extra curricular going on at the Iowa State sideline. It, this is getting very, very physical down there. And when Jesse Smith comes downhill, that angle and all, and makes a big hit. Watch 54 in the red. Whoa! Oh, can't wrap the arms up. Can't get off the block, so Brown spins out of there. Good job of sustaining the block so Smith couldn't get off it and, and wrap his arms around there and make the tackle. And there's the wheel that spat it up. Got the extra tape job on the ankle outside of the shoe to spat that left ankle. First and 10 at the 33 for the Sooners. Play action, Bradford. Incomplete intended for Gresham. Remain a sophomore of Ardmore, Oklahoma. James Smith covering on the play. You know, Oklahoma established in the run. Now they still can't connect to the passing game. And, and Smith, James Smith, is 5'8". Gresham is 6'6". So they go high and, and, and a little bit too tall. But Gresham has a, a, basically a 10-inch advantage over James Smith. But Smith fights and scratches and it's incomplete. Second and 10 at the 33. Murray in the backfield now is the tailback. Bradford, 10 of 20 for 95 yards today. Here is Murray, tries to split the defenders. Marco Murray on the pitch. To the 41, James Smith again making the stop for ISU. Nice job by Iglesias in the slot, blocking. He sustained his block, sustained his block, allowed the running back to cut up inside of him. That's a good job without the football. Wide receivers have to be good without the ball, just like a basketball player. They have to be good without the ball. You're not going to have it every single possession. Same with a wide up. Third and two, the ball on the 41 of Oklahoma. Brown. That's good. Forges ahead near the 45-yard line, and John Banks making the tackle. Chain gang will move. Brody Eldridge doing a good job as the motion man, the H-back. And on the backside, load hold. Finley doing a good job. Sustain, sustain, knocking people off the ball about five yards, then pancake and fall on top. You provide the syrup with your body. That's a lot of syrup, 6 8 3 50. To look at the difference in these two lines. They'll start to wear him down a little bit, I think, Bill. You know, keep pounding, pounding, and will Iowa State be able to hold up in the fourth quarter? Bradford fakes to Brown. Got time. Got a man. Wide yeah. open. He plays to a score off the fingertips. Third, James Smith covering. Third time, Bill. Third time deep. Can't quite hook up. Underthrow one time, overthrow twice. 
points again left on the field. And, and there's a little bit more of a, a breeze down there blowing than people realize. And, and Bradford, it, he has to get rid of it because he's going to get popped as soon as the ball leaves his hand. And, and the hit was made by Frere. And, and just a little bit tall, can't make the catch with the one hand, the right hand, Iglesias just frustrated to death. Great Iglesias coming in today, seventh in the league in receptions, fifth in yardage. Couldn't find the handle there. It would have been a great play. Here is Johnson, the flag thrown, and he is near the first down marker, Josh Raven. Curtis Taylor jumped uh, at the line of scrimmage for Iowa State. He was one guy that was moving a little bit. I don't know who they're going to call. He was one that was moving in. Iowa State definitely jumped in the neutral zone. Defense number 47. Yeah, they got him. Penalty is declined for Dale. Yeah, Taylor's the one that was jumpy at right defensive end. You see him down here. Watch him, watch him jump right there out of the stance, and he's in the neutral zone. And it gives him a, a free five. So, another third down as Oklahoma. 123 to go in the third quarter. Faces third and one for the 47 of Iowa State. 7-7. Seven, seven. Iowa State, a scales two-yard TD run. Chris Brown, an eight-yard run for Oklahoma score. Brown in the backfield here. Gets the football. Has the first down. So it's Oklahoma eating field, eating clock, and controlling it right now. Fred Guerin makes the tackle. And they're playing big boy football. Oklahoma's utilizing two 85. tight ends almost they every snap, a lot of count. times three tight ends. And the third tight end, Eldridge, is lining up the fullback side. And now they're just trying to impose their will. You know, they got the size advantage, sustain, sustain, finish your block. Don't let them come across your face. That's a nice finish by Lord Holt right there, the big fella. Murray comes on in the backfield as they continue to alternate those backs. First and ten at the 45 of Iowa State. Bradford to throw. In trouble. And he is brought down at the 44-yard line. LaShawn Parker. A loss of 11. Remember, Parker had that fumble recovery earlier today. Absolutely. And he got matched up against tight end Brody Eldridge. And Brody Eldridge lost his 10 feet. He got beaten inside. Brody Elvis is a pretty darn good blocker. They think of him as almost like another tackle. And here he is on the outside. He's got to cut him off to the inside. And he beats him across his face. Tough block with a slide protection. Everything's sliding away from him. And he's a half a man inside. But he's got to take a better step. Second and 20. Gresham at the 50. 40. First down. And more. Gresham. Cruises to the 25 of Iowa State. Puts up 30. James Smith the tackle. Well, the, the problem that took place there is there was a missed tackle. And, and the missed tackle became right here. Oh, unblocked, you got to make that tackle. Gresham gets an extra 25 yards down the football field. I know he's a big guy and he's powerful. You're going to get your head across and tackle him when you're unblocked in space. And ends the third quarter, and that got Oklahoma out of hock as well. Score 7 7. Iowa State and Oklahoma, the number five. 7 7. Oklahoma, Iowa State. The summary 3 0 U turnovers, but Oklahoma turning it around in the second half. 77 yards rushing in that third quarter after 37 in the first half. And they have it first and 10 at the 25 of Iowa State to start the fourth quarter. And Alan Patrick, the first tote. And down inside the 21, Jesse Smith, the stopper for the Cyclones. All right, Dave, if you're Iowa State, you said get us to the fourth quarter and give us a chance. What do they got to do? Well, they got to continue what they're doing. They got to take the football away, and you got to play like this. Watch him come off the block of Finley. Finley tries to cut him, get the bad wheel, get in space, and take him down. That's a nice play by a linebacker right there that's fighting a bad left ankle. And you have to finish the fourth quarter. Oklahoma knows that they didn't in Colorado on the road. That's their mantra today. 60 minutes, finish the fourth. Second and five. Iglesias. And he hangs on inside the two-yard line. Alvin Bell, and now OU knocking on the door for six. And throwing to this end zone, there's less wind. There are stands in this end zone that control the wind a little bit. Iglesias does a good job 
kind of lost his balance a little bit. I thought he could have caught it and continued his journey toward the end zone, but he did go down and catch the football, making it first and goal. Iowa State, three takeaways. Oklahoma's red zone defense only allowed one touchdown. That's what's kept Oklahoma in this football game. They mark it at the four. Brown on the first down carry, trying to push it into the end zone, and he does. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Man. Impressive, Chris Brown. His second score of the day, and Oklahoma's on top. He's got five touchdowns in the last three quarters plus 10 seconds. And he's got vision and he's got power. Look at the off guard Robinson, Duke Robinson, doing a good job of sustaining blocks. A little power play, pull that off guard, and Chris Brown says, I'm going to churn my legs, churn my legs. He's got vision, he's got power, he's got a nose to the end zone. Five touchdowns in seven quarters plus 10 seconds. Point after attempt, Garrett Hartley comes on for Oklahoma. Booms it, and it's good. So the Sooners waste little time starting the fourth quarter with a touchdown and have the lead for the first time today, 14-7. Oklahoma has taken the lead here in Ames, Iowa, Jack Tri Stadium, 14-7. It is a dogfight in the Big 12 South. Coming in today, four teams tied at two and one. we told A&M has an early lead against Nebraska. You see what's remaining, and that right side is really important numbers, Dave. No question, and the two toughest schedules remaining, A&M and Oklahoma State, the easiest remaining schedule, today's Oklahoma Sooners. And Oklahoma in the lead here. And the kick return, Robinson. Across the 25-yard line. And now for Dr. Pepper game break and more on the Texas game, here's Michael Eves. Yeah, guys, if you remember number 22, Texas, trailed Baylor early in this game, but now they're starting to pull away. Chris Obanaya cuts through the left side into the end zone. Right now, the Longhorns up 17-7 over the Bears in the third quarter. They've won nine straight against Baylor, trying to make it an even 10 on the road. Guys? So Texas struggling early, now trying to take control as Oklahoma is hoping they're doing here. Pitch out goes to Scales. He's run out of bounds on the Iowa State sideline. We got 13.38 to go. Iowa State had a 7-0 lead at halftime. OU answered on their first possession of the third quarter and then their first possession of the fourth quarter. And now it's up to the Cyclones to see what they can do with it. Texas A&M, Nebraska, a couple of coaches on the hot seat. 9-7 A&M early in that football game. In Lincoln. Yeah. Lincoln, Lincoln, I've been thinking. They've been uh, changing as well with the new athletic director, Tom Osborne, taking over an interim basis after Steve Peterson let go earlier this week. A lot to talk about in that matchup. Carey mm -hmm. goes to about the 29 to Scales and Lofton making the tackle. First down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. With the convenience of shopping at home, you can save up to 70% on amazing deals from Overstock.com. It's all about the O. And it's all about the T turnovers. Right there, Iowa State is plus three on the day. Unfortunately, Bill, they've only scored seven points off the three takes. Now on the season, 13 takeaways, a mere 20 points. It has kept them in the game. Can they do something to get back to even it up? Meyer to keep it. And brought down at the 35-yard line. Did his progress take him for a first down? There's the spot very important as Lofton makes the tackle. Who else, right? Yeah. Averaging just under 12 a game, fourth in the nation coming in today. Lofton is a playmaker. Watch Meyer once again, nowhere to go. Instead of forcing it, tuck it and run. And this is what he can do. He can create plays with his feet. And, uh, and Lo Lofton gets some help. I mean, it was, it was Lofton up high and Nick Harris down low. And they're just short. And Gene Chizik does not want to take a chance. He got blown up on fourth and one in the red zone. Doesn't want to give Oklahoma potentially a short field, only down one score. Playing field position. The defensive coordinator in him is coming out. Iowa State calls a timeout. I want to talk about it here is the Cyclones trailing by a touchdown, but they went for it on fourth earlier today and didn't get it. Let's see what he does. We'll find out when we come back. Welcome back to Jack Trice Stadium, Ames, Iowa, Oklahoma leading Iowa State 14 to 7. 12 minutes left to go in the game, and we're at the Dave Lapham's favorite part of the game. That's right, the Jack Lee's wild man of the game. It's these guys. What do you call yourself? Hey, we're, we're the Sooner Man. Jack Leach fans of the game right there. 
fans, Noxie, if, if you were driving, it would have been eight hours, bro. That's no right. <laughs> You'd be the Jack Link's driver of any game. That's right. Stay away. The punt, Brandner, and Reggie Smith stays away, and it takes an Iowa State bounce, so they don't go for it on fourth and short. There was a flag thrown. If the play stands, they've at least backed well, Oklahoma play. up and kind of got that field position thing. Don't forget college football Saturday triple header next week. Pac-10 special. How about 14th rated Southern Cal against Oregon, UCLA, Washington State, and then the nightcap of Cal and Arizona State. Illegal formation. Illegal formation. Not enough players on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty will re kick. Fourth down. So that hurts. That hurts. That yep. hurts that field position you were speaking of there, Bill. Let's let's put that in our mind. 14 yard line. Let's see how this ends up. It's only a five yard penalty from the scrimmage line, but let's see how much field position it costs them, if any. Yeah, they could even come out with better field position. Who knows? But right now they, they have to redo it. And the starting point would have been the 14. How does this outcome end up? So Mike Brantner will come on again. Reggie Smith, the return man, stands at the 30. 11.48 remaining. Fourth down, six. The ball on the 29 now. And remember, you have to have seven men on the line of scrimmage. They only had six on the last punt. Brantner, another good kick, but Smith will get a return. Fields it on his knees at the 21-22, so they pick up about eight yards yep. on that. Our Dr. Pepper honor roll today focuses on Iowa State and Bryce Broxma, the Big 12 Commissioner's honor roll seven times. Iowa State's dean list a couple of times and a first team academic all Big 12. Congratulations to Bryce, the senior out of Sheldon, Iowa. You know, I'm constantly amazed by how young people that are responsible enough to get uh, time management figured out, to be a student and an athlete. This is a big hit that he put on Bradford in the first half with a quarterback sack. Oklahoma with Patrick, first down carry, out to the 27 yard line. So the Sooners trying to get that ground game going, and they have pretty much. Fred Guerin made the attack. Remember, Oklahoma just 37 yards rushing in the entire first half. And the Sooners now with a second down and five. They've had 33 rushes, make it 34 for 128 yards total now. I'm still impressed with what Iowa State's doing. I think Oklahoma yeah. is taking control of the line of scrimmage, but Iowa State slugging and swinging and still hanging in there. Iowa State needs yet another turnover, though, it would seem. But they're going to have to, if they're going to get a chance to tie this game, leave alone win it, that they're going to have to have a short field situation because Oklahoma's defense has been stout. Bell and Johnson make the stop. I agree to go 80 yards in 10 to 12 plays against Oklahoma. Not many people do it. But the thing about Oklahoma's defense play is they've been so stout in the red zone. I mean, they've had, in the first half, Iowa State got there three times, and they only scored one touchdown. The other two times, they got no points. Pushed the 36-yard field goal wide, and then Iowa State went for it on fourth, and one Oklahoma blew it up. OU is 8-12 of on third down, third and two here. Murray in the backfield. Oh, oh Bradford had it batted down as coming up was Bibbs, Michael Bibbs, a junior out of Atlanta, Georgia. And they get the hold on third down. Big three and out. And this is just perfect time to come off the slot. Little, little defensive back blitz off the slot. And in time it read Bradford's eyes. You know what? I bet in hindsight, he wishes he made a bigger effort to pick that off. He wasn't yeah. drilled. If he catches that, he scores. Get a conventional score. Michael Cohen to punt for Oklahoma as Cohen has averaged 31 yards a kick today. Life is the deep man. This one is shanked. Midfield out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. Here's that short field Iowa State is searching for. Yep. This is always interesting. 44 yard line. Wow. Great field position. We'll return after this word from Dr. Pepper, your local Dr. Pepper.
It has been hard hitting smash mouth football and Iowa State getting great field position after the poor punt by Oklahoma comes out fire into Hamilton but he's ruled out of bounds or is he Oklahoma's begging They're for it. Saying no, catch. it's a catch and Marquise Hamilton gets credit for the reception and a first down let's see where they spotted at the 30 day yeah let's see the catch and did he get one foot in bounds before the other was out of bounds catch left foot down right foot not that's a catch Left foot's down, right foot comes out of bounds, but he has possession with his left foot down on the field of play. And it looks like they're going to, I don't know if Oklahoma's going to challenge it or if it's coming down from the top. Oklahoma's challenging they are the challenging. on the field of a catch. And I thought he had possession with the left foot down before he stepped out of bounds with the right foot. Well, it was right in front of the Oklahoma bench, so right. they got a good live view of it. We'll find out when we come back on FS. To review whether or not he made possession is After the call. Review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Yes. It's a catch. Oklahoma starts with a timeout. It was a catch. Left foot was down. Had possession before the right foot came down out of bounds. I think it was a good call. That's a great throw by Blythe. And I'll tell you, the guy, Meyer. Uh, by Meyer, I should say, yeah, Blythe. If he throws, we get a real story. <laughs> great throw by Meyer. And man, a guy that's having the game of his life. Marcus Hamilton. Hamilton, six catches, 80 yards. So first to 10 at the 30. This all started with a 14-yard punt from Oklahoma that got great field position for Iowa State. Yep. Play action. Meyer in trouble. Unloads. And uh, sees it go into the stands, sitting on his fanny. But he got avoided the sack. Granger was all over it. And, and here's the big story of the day. You have to win field position if you're going to pull an upset. 15-yard advantage. Multiply that, multiply that by 10 possessions. You got 150 yards of hidden yards of football field in half. Your average dry start, your own 39 yard line. And, and this is the third start Iowa State has had in Ohio, Oklahoma side of the 50 yard line for a short field deal. They only have seven points. That's how strong Oklahoma's defense has been on short field. Hand off to Hamilton. Can't escape the Oklahoma defense and Granger. Demarcus Granger pulls him down. And now, third and long coming up for Oklahoma, other for Iowa State. Oklahoma's defense has only allowed 222 yards total offense for Iowa State today on 52 plays. And how about Oklahoma's defense stepping up? It's a third and 15 now. Short field for Iowa State. When Oklahoma State, or when Oklahoma's defense has been backs against the wall, they have responded. And it's a big third and long for Iowa State right now. 9.16 to go. Third and 15 officially. Meyer again in trouble. Fires. Wow. Complete. He's got the first down. Right. It is Blythe still on his feet. And they finally blow the whistle. So Todd Blythe and a huge roar from the crowd as Blythe, he's one of the all time faves here as far as people. He and Meyer, roommates and Coaches will tell you better people than they are players, and they're terrific players. Yeah, and, and watch him run a courageous route to the middle of the field, knowing he could get blown up. That ball is perfect, though. It is just, it's just dipped right in there perfectly between corner and safety. The Rubies connect, and it's a first to 10 at the 17. Not much going there on down to the 15. As scale stopped by Lewis Baker. That was third and 15, and a strike by Brett Meyer between Lindy Holmes and D.J. Wolf. I mean, that was a very courageous route by Blythe between two good defensive backs that can react to the football, and Meyer threw a fastball right down the heart of the plate. Steve Wright. Blythe's third catch today, 162 in his career, one behind Lane Danielson to tie him career-wise at the top of the ISU charts, but they're more concerned about pulling off a major upset. Second and eight. Meyer scrambling on the rollout. Pitches it away. The Dr. Pepper game break. Let's now go to Michael Eves. All right, guys. Number six, South Carolina is playing from behind all day against Vandy. Two minutes to go. Fourth down deep in their own territory. Spurrier says we got to go for it. Smelly overthrows his receiver. Vanderbilt wins it in Columbia, 17 to six. The second team in the BCS top six guys this weekend to lose. Man, the beat goes on, Mike. Yeah. Unbelievable. College football is just...
impossible to predict. Impossible. Absolutely crazy, and don't we love it? Yeah. <laughs> Third down and eight. Every week is an adventure. <laughs> trying to urge their team to pull off one here. Huge call on third. Meyer going to keep. Squirts forward. Diving. And very, very close, but I don't think so. We'll have to wait and see again as Baker makes the tackle. It's a little short. It's a little short by probably football plus. And I, you, you got to go for it here. Are they going to kick a field goal? Uh, you got to go for it. it. I think it is fourth down. Brett Meyer again making a quick decision. Very quick decision with the football. Nowhere to go. Get after it. Stretch the ball. Spot is just short. This is the game right here. Fourth and a foot and a half. Meyer, option. Dove. Meyer on the option. Looks like he's got it, doesn't he? Iowa State signaling it, but nothing from the official yet as he went out of bounds. Wolf and Lofton trying to cut him down. They show some speed on that snap defensively. Ooh. First down, Iowa State. First and goal, Cyclones. Down a touchdown. Bill, red zone has been twilight zone for the most part for Iowa State. Nice job by Brett Meyer stretching his big body out as far as he possibly could to generate that first down. You know, if Meyer were an inch short, shorter than 6'3", might have been a problem. Gene Chizik in his first year here. Oh, what he'd give for a win today. Meyer in the end zone. Incomplete intended for Sumrall. ISU fans were out in the flag. Harris covering for Oklahoma. Five on five. Harris and Sumrall. There's a little chicken fighting going on, a little hand fighting, but uh, no advantage in the official's opinion to either, either player. You got to figure at some point in this sequence, this ball's high anyway, you got to figure that Todd Blythe from the left hash mark put him out right, and, and uh, that fade that we were talking about. Worst case scenario, they take a safety out of the box to double Blythe, and they can run the football a little bit more easily between the tackles. He's on the bottom of the screen, one-on-one. -on -one. Right here is Blythe. Meyer across the middle, ball's tipped. Oh! Intercepted Oklahoma! The Sooners pick it off in the end zone. D.J. Wolf, his fourth interception of the year, and Lofton, I believe, got the deflection. So Oklahoma dodging a huge bullet. And red zone defense continues to be the story of the day. Oklahoma refusing to lose in the red zone. They bent but didn't break. One time Ohio State was able to score the rest of the time. On four downs, Oklahoma stops them, a missed field goal, and now it take, now it interception their first takeaway of the game. And it's tipped by Wolf, and yeah. then he stays with it. He tips it to himself. Outstanding play. That is not the goal, yeah, by that, the way. That was the uh, Ohio State, State play. Play. Ohio State low goal. And smart move to not try to bring it up. First and 10 at the 20, and Bradford got one-on-one -on -one coverage, also got room to roam to Kelly, and Kelly makes the grab near the 35-yard line. Chris Singleton covering on the play, and does Iowa State have another stop in them, Dave? I'll tell you, that's, it, it, and right now, you're crestfallen. You know, your heart has sunk, and defensively, you have to gather yourself because Offensively, you had your opportunity, and Gene Chizik told Noxy as he was going in at halftime, we're often in the red zone, meaning their performance in the first half. It continued into the second half, and that's been the story of the game right now, not being opportunistic enough in the red zone. And Oklahoma going for the throat now. Patrick muscles his way to just shy of the 40-yard line. Rashawn Parker makes the tackle. He got 6.39 to go. Iowa State down a touchdown, and Oklahoma would love to have a time-consuming drive. Wolf has got great ball skills. He was an offensive player, running back, wide receiver. They have to get him on the football field because he's such a good athlete. And Wolf catches, tips the ball, and, and catches it himself. And uh, he is a heck of a football player. And they moved him. He played some corners, played some safeties, played some wideout, played some running back. Very gifted athlete. Makes a big, big play in the end zone. Second down and four. Patrick, Iowa State bows up. Jesse Smith banged up ankle and all, making the stop. And the Sooners now faced with a third down. 
what this game has done for Iowa State is immense. You know, and there's no such thing as moral victories, but the fact is they've shown hearts to huge. Iowa State has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe in a slugfest with the number five ranked BCS team and it's not given an inch. I mean, they are battling tooth and nail every single snap. That's something that you can build on. You look for small victories when you're trying to get things turned around. This isn't a small one. This is big in terms of the intangibles that you're trying to get established. They're trying to come up with one more big stop here. Brown in the backfield. Third and two. Play action to Brown. Bradford. Got it off, complete, first down, Oklahoma. They have a hold on Oklahoma that's going to nullify. Personal foul, roughing the quarterback. No hold, roughing the ground. Late hit. 15 yards to first down. Eldridge, the receiver. Taylor commits the foul. Taylor, excited, thinking I have a shot. Oh, he hits, he just basically, he puts his hand on top of his helmet, and they call him for hitting the quarterback in the head. That is ticky tack. I mean, that's not even, that's not called in powder puff. I mean, this is football. This isn't powder puff. This is it's been so physical all day. You hate to see it. By rule, it's 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 it is by rule. But in this kind of a game, you let them. Yeah. Because I mean, he was, actually is pulling up at yeah. that point. Yeah. yeah. He's it's got good. all his momentum and force going forward, trying to block it, and then it's no a malicious, tap. no malicious intent whatsoever. I would agree with you. But he gives Oklahoma first to ten on the 39 of Iowa State, and a new set of downs in Brown. Now clock moving, approaching five minutes, Smith makes the tackle. You know, go back here a moment, Dave, right. and take a look again, Iowa State on that interception. We talked about Todd Blythe, take a look at his coverage. Yeah, he's, he's in the bottom, the short side of the field, one-on-one -on -one coverage, he gets inside. He gets inside of Reggie Smith on the, on the post, and they don't go to him. And, you know, Todd Blythe, yeah, he's figuring, he, there was somebody way underneath and they might have seen, you know, coverage rolled his way, so they go elsewhere. DJ Wolf makes him pay, though, for going elsewhere with a huge interception. And understand, we have perfect vision up here five minutes later with replay. <laughs> Hindsight's always 20-20. Oklahoma trying to sew up a hard-earned win. And Taylor makes the tackle again here on DeMarco Murray, the ball carrier. Sooners up 14-7. Trying to lock it up. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Look better with savings up to 70% on amazing deals from Overstock.com. It's all about the up. You know, I, I don't think, though, that in a situation like that, your best player is black. I'm not saying force it to him, but I'm saying that kid has shown time and time again he can make plays. I would give him the benefit of the doubt to try to let him make a play. Yeah, if you can pick there, you can say, all right, yeah. you better pick. Yeah. Third and four, and... Iowa State again yeah, being strong. Cycle. Jesse yeah. Smith leading the way in there on DeMarco Murray again. Coming downhill, Jesse Smith Good showing job. hard, man. He's got the bad wheel. He's got it spatted up. I mean, went in, he went into the pit and had a little tire change, and they retreaded it. I mean, and, he, and he's out there playing his guts out. Iowa State has come to play today, and Oklahoma knows it. Fourth down and four. The ball on the 33 to short for it, and Oklahoma showing that they're gonna go for it here. Well, they figure if they punt the goes in the end zone, they only pick up 13 yep. yards. Now they call a timeout. Sooners call a timeout. So Oklahoma will talk it over here. College Football Saturday on FSN is presented by Kiyosara, the new Value Frontier. And brought to you in part by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper Bobbler. Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. By American Airlines, we know why you fly. We're American Airlines. And the first down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Live better with Overstock.com. It's all about the O. And there wasn't a whole lot of O today. Both D's stepped up today. We're talking 14-7. We're talking Oklahoma, fourth in the country averaging just under 50 points a game. And as of right now, the Cyclones have limited them to 14. Now, granted, Oklahoma had three giveaways, but they came as a result of the Cyclones being physical defensively. And if, if Iowa State could have taken advantage of red zone opportunities, Bob Stoops may be looking at a lot more dicey proposition than he is right now, up seven with the ball on fourth down in his 33-yard line. 
313 yards of offense is what Oklahoma's been held to. Yeah. They controlled the game in the second half. They did not in the first half, even though it was just a 7-0 lead. Iowa State controlled just about everything about the game. 150 yards less offense. A football field to half. Tip your cap to Iowa State's defense. Fourth and four. They got the first down. The completion to Gresham. And that just might seal it. 2.57 to go. And Bibbs making the tackle. And Bibbs said Gresham pushed off. Bibbs the linebacker. Gresham too big and too fast for linebacker. Gresham 6'6. Six, six. Bibbs 6'2. Six, Gresham could probably run faster than Bibbs. And when he sees Gresham with separation, Bradford's eyes got big and said, I can't miss that target. And I know one bounced off the shoulder pass and ended up in an interception, but I know he's got good hands. Seven different receivers for Bradford at quarterbacking today. Bradford 16 to 28 for 183 yards. Brown covering up with that football. Chris Brown, number 29. Help force Iowa State to use some timeouts here in just a moment. Cyclones have two remaining. OU with just one. And you know, Ataba Rubin making the tackle. Oklahoma came in, Bill, saying, all we want to do is win this game. I mean, they seem to know something. You know, it's like, all we want to do is go on the road and win this football game. Forget about any kind of point spread or easy victory, name our own score. Forget that bunk. They had an idea after Texas embarrassed Iowa State at home last week. Iowa State would pull their necks, and they did pull it. Yeah, and Oklahoma, you look at their schedule, the road, if you will, they won at Tulsa in state in Dallas, not right. the true road, and then they lost to Colorado. Right. So they're just looking for a true road win of any kind. Right. Yes, they thing. like it to be more impressive, but anymore, you just take the W and get out of town. Ruben making the stop here. Uh, timeout Iowa State. They got one left. And the upcoming games for the Sooners, back home in Norman for Texas A&M and Baylor, and then at Texas Tech before the Bedlam battle against Oklahoma State. There was and a penalty on the play, illegal crackback block number 18 on the offense. That's a 15-yard penalty. Second down. And as they sort out that penalty, check out our Kyocera Wireless call of the game. Another one of the big plays here today. Right here is Blake. Meyer across the middle, ball's tipped. Oh. Intercepted Oklahoma. The Sooners pick it off in the end zone. DJ Wolf. DJ Wolf, his fourth interception of the year. And Lofton, I believe, got the deflection. So Oklahoma dodging in. So Wolf with a huge interception. And then Oklahoma now milking the clock. And now has it on a second and 23 at the 32. Iowa State has chosen to decline the previous penalty. Therefore, it'll be third down and eight yards. Iowa State declines third and eight on the penalty. Texas up on Baylor, 17-10 in the fourth quarter. Texas A&M, 16. Nebraska, 14 in the second quarter. Tight fits around the league, and it doesn't matter if it's the cellar dweller against the league leader. No doubt. I mean, the Big 12 Conference has parity. The country has parity. And I think it's the 85 scholarship rule. I think that television, every football game's televised. Instead of only seeing five teams all the time, kids say, I can go there and play. This team has a starting quarterback. This team needs one. I, I like their style of offense. I'm going to go there. I think television has opened up all these kids' eyes, and they have a much bigger uh, base to decide from. Third and seven now for Oklahoma. 143 to go. Iowa State. Nice. Come up with a sack. So the Cyclones might get another opportunity. Chris Brown makes the tackle. A loss of 10. And now this also, Dave, pushes that field goal Absolutely. opportunity back another 10 yards. And it's certainly not a chip shot now for Garrett Hartley. Nice call by Wayne Bolt. And against Texas, he put them in some blitz situations that kids kind of froze. And they didn't make plays. But that time, Chris Brown, you know, Wayne Bolt dialed him up, and Chris Brown said, I'm going to answer the call. This is our smooth move brought to you by Keystone Light. Brown taking care of Bradford on the sack. Nice job by Brown, staying, making Bradford reverse field, contained him, made him reverse field, and then finished him. Excellent play. Keystone Light, smooth move right there. 
that's a that's a nice effort by, by Chris Brown. And as you say, Bill, I think the biggest thing there takes him out of the red zone. You don't want to take a red zone sack if you're a quarterback. Bradford took the sack, but now it's a much dicier proposition for Hartley. Hartley's longest kick, a 53-yarder, and Hayes McEachern is setting up. And this one is a 43-yard field goal attempt. Hartley, plenty of left in there. And it's good. And that will all but seal it for Oklahoma. He started to pass the right upright and hooked it just inside the left one. I mean, he threw that bad boy down the fairway now. Ooh, that had some draw. With 1.34 to go, a 43-yard field goal by Garrett Hartley. And Oklahoma goes up 10. And pats all around for Hartley. All angles on Hartley's 43-yard field goal. Take your pick. Yeah, boy, he started out past the right upright. And he just he brought that bad boy back big time. The low squib kick, and it is recovered by Iowa State at the 39-yard line. Oh, you not wanting to give up a big run back that would uh, give the Cyclones anything. James Smith he recovers the football for the Cyclones. So they have it on their 39 with a minute 33 to go, down 10, and no timeouts. Yeah, tough duty. You have to uh, you have to score twice. You can't stop the clock, and you're going against one of the best defenses in the country. You've only scored seven points on them all day long when you've had multiple red zone inside the 20 opportunities. First to 10 for Meyer to go to work. Better hustle. And incomplete as Reggie Smith on the back of Barkema. Barkham is saying he went through me to catch the football or make a play on it. And the official is saying that Reggie Smith timed it. Arrival of the football and his contact was simultaneous. And I'm not sure about that. No. <laughs> I don't think it's a game changer, but uh, I certainly would agree with Barkham on that one. I think he had a reason to bark. Yeah. Second and 10 now. Meyer, 17 to 27 for 151 yards, had one intercepted. This one to Sumrall. That'll stop the RJ clock on the first down, and they reset. Sumrall tackled by Smith. Yeah, Smith tried to funnel him back inside. Doesn't want guys to get to the sideline and be able to step out of bounds and stop the clock for a longer period of time than just moving the chains and restarting. First and 10 at the 46, across Ooh. the middle, Hamilton. Short of the first down, so the clock keeps moving, and Iowa State has to hustle. Wolf made the tackle. Marquise Hamilton. And he spikes it to stop it with 59 seconds to go. Now, in this situation, Brent Venables has a nice deal where he can rush four and drop seven, and Gene Chiswick knows it. He knows that Oklahoma's not going to blitz. He knows they're going to drop seven into coverage, maybe sometimes eight and rush three. So the windows are going to be very tight, and as they approach the red zone, the windows get tighter. And that's where Iowa State has struggled, as we just saw by that interception Wolf had. When the athletic players have less ground they have to cover, they become a bigger factor. Third and two, that not the big deal. 59 seconds to go is from the 38 of Oklahoma. Meyer slings it, blind. Wow, almost. 15, DJ Wolf. Covering on the play. Well, that was courage there. Go up, expose your body, almost pull it in with the left hand. Life has got some guts and he's got some ability. He knows he could take a lick here. He goes airborne, one hand, not quite. That would have tied Lane Danielson's record for receptions in a career at Iowa State. Fourth and two. With an empty backfield. Cyclones trailing by 10. And that ought to do it as it goes incomplete, and someone may have got a hand on it near the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Baker, I believe. Granger also up in there, and Iowa State turns it over on downs, and Oklahoma can just take a knee. No timeouts remaining for the Cyclones. 51 seconds to go. And the Sooners are going to escape Ames, Iowa and continue their domination of this series.
But boy, it was anything but a party for OU against Gene Chizik Cyclones today. And Gene Chizik's group grew up a lot in one week. What a difference a week makes as they take the knee. Last week, self-destructive Bill that busted for 30, 235 yards. Ten busts. Today, they didn't bust, and they played hard, and they played smart, and they lost to the number five ranked team in the BCS by a mere 10 points. There's a look at the Big 12 South standings. Oklahoma, remember, they control their destiny. They're only lost to Colorado, a North team. Right. So if you are going to lose, you want to lose to the other division. And as far as this BCS business, if you want to lose, you want to lose early, which they did. But this will hurt them on style points around the country. Yeah, there's no doubt. And remember, they have the tiebreaker against Texas because they beat them head to head. Right. So, you know, they have a, they have a major lead on Texas. Gene Chizik, Bob Stoops. A lot of respect there. Of course, Gene Chizik, defensive coordinator for Texas when they won the national championship and competed against Bob Stoops. And, and healthy dose of respect. He knows what Oklahoma has for a talent pool, and he should be proud. Like I said, there's no such thing as a moral victory if you're a football player, but his football team stepped up and played so much better than they did the week before. If they play with that kind of intensity and effort the rest of the way, and they've got an off week next week, then they play AM, Baylor. Texas Tech and Oklahoma State. The, or I'm sorry, that's the Oklahoma schedule, but they're off. They have Missouri and then Kansas State, Colorado. They'll get a win somewhere if they play with that kind of effort. Absolutely. Let's send it down to Jim Knox with Bob Stoops. All right, thank you, Bill. Coach, congratulations. Uh, I guess it was a heck of a halftime talk. You guys in the first half a, a little sloppy, but in the second half, you got that offense going a little bit. Well, we got the running game going. We still had, you know, some deep opportunities, guys behind them wide open and you know, the, the wind just kind of carried it a little bit. We couldn't execute that. And then the, the, the turnovers just, just bury it. Fortunately, we got one here at the end. Defense came up big. Talking about that turnover, DJ Wolf, he had a nice reflection and then also intercepted the pass. He made some really nice plays. That interception, uh, Curtis Lofton tipped it to him, was a big play in the game. What does it say about your club, Coach? Because you, you, you did come into a, a hostile environment, a, a team that you could take for take lightly. Sam Bradford came out a little high, a little low, but yet you guys are pulling out. That's a sign of a good team right there. Well, we, we hung in there and played well in the fourth quarter to make the plays. You know, it shows some character. Still, I, I feel there's some things we got to keep getting better at. We will, but uh, uh, but I, I like the character course in the fourth quarter and the second half. All right, Coach, thanks right. for the time. Congratulations again. Bill? Just get a win. I mean, that's really thing. Uh, it doesn't uh, become to the fans a, a big deal, but that's all you look for anymore. And that sounds cliche, but that's the truth this year. Oh, it absolutely is the truth. And, uh, you know, Iowa State, you have to give them tons of credit. I mean, I think people thought, you know, that, hey, this isn't even going to be a football game after what Texas did. But Iowa State regrouped. They had a great week of practice. And Oklahoma knew coming in here that it was going to be a battle. I mean, they really did. And when we talked to the coaches during the week, they knew it. And they got exactly what they expected. And, and, and they won it. Sooners get a breather off next week. And then they face Texas A&M as Oklahoma goes 7-1, and 3-1 and one in the league. Iowa State 1-7 and seven and 0-4 in Big 12. This is Bill Land for Dave Lapham and Jim Knox saying so long from Ames, Iowa. Iowa State falls to the Sooners. Oklahoma wins at 17-7. Remember to join us next week for a Pac-10 triple header. Number 14, Southern Cal. Number 10, Oregon. Then UCLA, Washington State. Followed by 12th rated Cal and number 8, Arizona State. It all begins with college football Saturday kickoff presented by Kia Sarah, 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 Pacific. You've been watching Big 12 football presented by Kia Sarah on F. Welcome to the Toyota Truck Big 12 Post Game Show. Hi there, welcome into the FSN Studios. John Radigan here with Pat Jones and Jackie Sherrill. This is the Toyota Truck Big 12 Post Game Show. The band is back together again before this season is all said and done. It may go down as one of the strangest years in college football history. Let's start with you, Jackie. What do you think about Iowa State hanging with OU for three and a half quarters? Well, every game today you better bring your a game when you don't you, you're in trouble but oklahoma when you look at the first half you know the six possessions they had that they, they punted three times they fumbled they threw the interception and the clock ran out in the first half i mean they were fortunate in the first half and not being down by two touchdowns and still 
Texas beat Iowa State 56-3 to a week ago, Pat. Well, you know, OU of late has had a hard time sustaining the running game, and they did again today. Probably got to give Gene Chizik and the Iowa State crew some credit here because OU only rushed for 126 yards, and they've been a little bit more hit and miss with their offensive line problem than they need to be. Iowa State might have been able to tie this thing up if not for a great defensive play by that OU defense in the red zone. D.J. Wolf on the receiving end of a nice interception, and D.J. is standing by with our Jim Knox. DJ Wolf, what a game. You saved it, the game-winning interception. What was going through your head? What took, Take us through on that final play by Iowa State. Um, we had a rip dogs on, and um, we kind of thought they were going to go to the second receiver, the inside slot guy again. And Curtis Lofton was able to get his hands up, and I was just fortunate enough to be in the right place at the right time. I just thank Curtis for batting the ball down there. The uh, start of the game a little slow. Of course, turnover is a big key reason why. Iowa State jumped on top 7 to nothing. Did you think, oh, no, not again? Um, well, what's going through our minds is four-quarter game, and you know, thus far this season we haven't been able to put four quarters together, and we're just thinking in our heads we can't lose this game, we can't lose this game, and the guys did a great job coming out after half and you know, playing soon the football. Trailed at half. What was Coach Stoops' message at half? Um, just, just keep fighting. Just, just keep playing how we can play ball. Um, no negative uh, thoughts, no negative comments in there in the locker room, and he was just telling everybody to just, just play ball like we can. What's your mindset right now, knowing you guys are in the BC, at BC, BSC hunt, BCS hunt? What is going through your mind right now as far as just taking each game at a time? Oh, yes, sir. That's, that's the thing, taking each game at a time. Um, we know you can't crown a champion midway through the season, and we're not trying to pay attention to the BCS right now. We just know that if we win every game from here on out, we don't know what can happen. We're ready to see. There you go. Appreciate the time, DJ. Thanks, sir. Very difficult to win on the road in the Big 12. Really difficult to win on the road anywhere right now. And Sam Bradford is learning that the hard way. Look at the difference in his numbers at home or at neutral sites, which of course includes the Cotton Bowl, uh, versus on the road. He had the Colorado game on the road, and of course this one on the road, that Texas game was in a neutral site. Uh, it is difficult to go out there and get this thing done. You know, years ago, Pat, Barry Switzer got in trouble when he was coach of the Cowboys for saying of the Cincinnati Bengals, hey, there's no Iowa State's here. There's no Iowa State's in the Big 12. Even <laughs> Iowa State's not Iowa State. Well, you know, Bradford did not ever look comfortable today to no. us, but when you go on the road, like say, this time of the year in the Big 12 and go north. You catch wind, you can catch weather. You got to be able to do it, but he never did look very comfortable. It doesn't matter. It's a W. Which is the, and that's what that's, the, the mantra of the Oklahoma Sooners was all week long. You got to go out there and win, especially on the road. You know, today, it, when you add them all up at the end of the season, it's the W's. And if you continue to con win, regardless of how you win, just win. And it was a game, as it usually is, that was maybe not decided by turnovers in this case, because Iowa State wins the turnover battle, that, but it was definitely a factor in this game, maybe why it stayed so close. Well, you heard Bob Stoops talking to Jim Knox about the, the turnovers, and Alan Patrick, who is normally dependable, uh, fumbled the ball. Big Gresham, who had a, a nice day overall, let one hit him in the chest and ricochet up. And, and again, give Iowa State some credit here. They stayed around the football uh, all the way. You know, they got after people, they hit folks, and, and really did the things that you need to do. Now, obviously, OU's got to do a better job protecting the football. Yeah, you can't lose that uh, turnover battle and win the game very often. They were able to do that today. And, and Jackie, you mentioned this at the outset. I mean, this is not the kind of first half drive chart you normally see from the Sooners. No, it, Iowa State was putting eight, nine and, and people on the line of scrimmage. And, Unfortunately, they were not able to get that little seam in there in, in busting. The longest yard Oklahoma had today was an 11-yard rush. Wow. Yeah, so there you go. The uh, Sooners were able to hold on in spite of the fact that Gene Chizik, a defensive mind in his own right, of course, the former defensive coordinator at Texas when they won the national championship, Gene Chizik had a little defensive plan to stop the Sooners. It's not quite enough for us today. Coming up next on the Toyota Truck Big 12 Post Game Show, we'll have more post game reaction from Ames, Iowa, and later highlights from that Texas Gene Chizik's old team. Texas taking on Baylor. It's the Big 12 Post Game Show rolling. Today's Toyota moving forward drive of the game. It's the third quarter. The game is tied at seven. Chris Brown on third and three. And Chris Brown breaks the tackle and then gets six tough yards. That's a first down. Later in the drive, it's second and 20. And it's Bradford to the tight end. It's a screen play to Jermaine Gresham, and he gets 30 on the play. Huge play in the drive. We go to the 
fourth quarter, uh, and it's uh, first and goal, and Chris Brown plows in from four yards out. Touchdown, Oklahoma. That completes the drive. You see it there, 14 plays, 80 yards. It took up five minutes and 15 seconds off the clock. Welcome back into the FSN studios. This is the Toyota Truck Post Game Show brought to you by Toyota Trucks. And uh, there are no real moral victories in the Big 12, at least not in conference. Coaches will tell you that. There aren't moral victories in conference play. Still, hanging with Oklahoma a week uh, after they were drubbed by Texas has to make Iowa State feel good, even if Gene Chizik doesn't want to admit it. Let's take you back to Ames, Iowa, where our guys are standing by. It's Bill Land and Dave Lapham. Thanks. Dave, when we look back at this game, who got more out of this contest here, Iowa State or Oklahoma? That's a great question. I think they both got what they needed. Yeah. Well, obviously not really, because Iowa State wanted to win. And they played well enough to win. They just didn't capitalize on every opportunity. Oklahoma needed a road win, a true road win, and they didn't care how it happened. They got it. Iowa State gained a huge measure of national respect, though. In the first half, they had a 7-0 lead and earned it. It was no fluke. And they went tooth and nail with Oklahoma to the very end of the football game. Iowa State played almost as well as they could have played. There were a couple of critical plays, as you might imagine, in a 17-7 game. We'll have a chance to take a look at a couple of them here that turned this one to Oklahoma's favor. There's no doubt. I mean, Oklahoma eventually in the second half decided we're going to establish our ground game. We are going to pound Iowa State. And they came in with their two tight end, three tight end package and made it a physical matchup between the hash marks and said, you know what? We're going to smash mouth. We'll see if you can hold up to it. Our offensive line is huge. We have a size advantage over you. And that interception right there when, when D.J. Wolf secured the football in the end zone, showing great ball skills, was coffin nails for Iowa State. In the red zone, Oklahoma's defense in the red zone was monumental. Iowa State's inefficiency offensively in the red zone, equally monumental. When the field shrunk, Oklahoma's athleticism really showed up, and they really throttled Iowa State in the red zone. So the Sooners get the W. Iowa State gets some respect, but still a tough luck loser here today. For Dave Lapham, Bill Land, we'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, guys, thanks so much. And it plays right into our moral victory mantra here. Coach, is, is there a moral victory even for Iowa State here? Well, when Iowa State got, like you said earlier, they got drilled pretty good by Texas last week. Now, all coaches are going to say, yes, we went to, wanted to win the ball game, which obviously they do. When you're developing a program, though, they made a step today. Iowa yes. State did it. And credibility, and like Dave said, nationally, you know, it, it appears pretty good. And doggone, and Chizik and them, you got to give them credit. Sure, they're disappointed, but you got to give them some credit. Well, and they got to feel like maybe this helps the kids believe. Look, what we're teaching you is the right thing, and the proof is it worked against Oklahoma this week. Well, John, you saw some players today play really hard. You saw some linebackers make play after play. You saw some defensive linemen. So when they watch the film, and when they will see themselves yeah. playing better. And that gives them confidence. They will also cringe when they watch the film because of some missed opportunities through this game. Well, yeah, both things. You know, they, they here, here we're going to see the, the missed field goal early on. This is going to put them up by 10. And, and they've got all the momentum. Could have gained a bit more. That was big. This is the, the fourth and short yardage call here. And, you know, you can debate this one a couple of different no, ways. You I mean, can't uh, well, I know you're right. You, you, you kick it, no. you're up by 10. Yeah. This is the interception here in the end zone. This ball got tipped. Now, I think on the same hand, John, you can look at it as a missed opportunity by Iowa State. But Curtis Lost, Lofton, Austin English, Granger, Wolf, and these OU kids defensively bowed up pretty good when they had to. So, yes, missed opportunities, but give OU defense. Boy, that's a heck of a catch by Wolf. He actually tipped it a second time and had to go back and get it. It could well have been caught by a cyclone there. You don't want to debate that. On that fourth no. and short, you go for that in well, your mind every you're, time. You're seven up. You're going to go in halftime. 14-10, give me, I'm going to take 10 because now the chance of making it, you didn't make the third and one. What made you think that you can make the fourth and one? But your kicker didn't make your last field goal either. Yeah, I mean, but you're is there closer. Any of that? It's a chip shot. You're closer. So yeah, you just it's let a it go. chip shot on this one where the last one wasn't. Yeah, well, that is a way that they could have gone. In this case, didn't. And the result is what it is. Oklahoma gets the victory today, and they improved to 7-1 on the season 3-1 in conference play. Lots more.